here we go. I'm gonna try to try to nail this. I'm nervous and I'm still sick. So let's see if I can do this. <laughs> All right. Good luck. Hey, hey, hey! What is going on, guys? Welcome to the fifth episode of Adventure Cast, the podcast that is map. See, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I start. I'm like, I'm like, wait, what do I say? I, I can't remember. You're like, what is, oh, the, no. what is the, uh, the intro like again? I, I know. And I'm like, hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's like, all right. This is like speaking in front of a crowd for some reason. <laughs> you just grab your popcorn, right? <laughs> all right. Hey, 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 what is going on, guys? Welcome to the fifth episode of AdventureCast, the podcast that revolves around AQW and everything AE. I am your host, Blanky, and today we have a very, very special guest. I am honored to be able to interview Inani Tess, also known as Sirius, who is a writer for Adventure Quest Worlds and Dragon Fable. Hey, how's it going? Yes! I'm sorry. No, you're good. I, I was like, I, I don't got, know. I was like, am I supposed to say something? Like, I got excited. I jumped the gun good. a little too no, much. No, you are there. good. Was I was like, I was like, how do I introduce myself? I was like, I didn't even think of this part. <laughs> yes, I tried to. I always try to give someone uh, a little bit of an introduction. But what I want to start out by doing is actually having you uh, introduce yourself a little more, since you are an Anitas. So right. if you want to. The floor is yours to kind of tell everyone what you're about. All right. Sounds good. Um, I'm an anatist. I am the, well, okay, rewind. I always, I never know what to call myself because I, like, don't know what my official position is at AE, like, in terms of, like, hierarchy of writing. Um, Gotcha. Because, like, as much as I would love to say, oh, I'm the assistant lead on writing, um, one, I don't know if I officially am, so don't need a mm-hmm. don't need anybody being like, um, hey, you're not that. Um, <laughs> and they're like, um, so. <laughs> what is your suggestion of what I should add to the end of that? Ooh, the, my suggestion to what you should add, I would say you are the creative, the creative scholar behind <laughs> some. Some some good, cool, creative releases. You have a talent that a lot of people don't, including myself. I cannot write. I'm not creative in that way. So you have a talent that I'm sure a lot of people wish they had. So I would say you are a uh, a creative a creative scholar. I like that. It sounds nice. <laughs> You're giving me way too much credit. Um... No, no, no. no I'm, I'm, ser- I'm dead serious. I'm not kidding at all. I, I wish, I only wish I could write, man, like, and create, like, just cool, interesting stories, so that alone, just being able to do that is something to be proud of, and, and uh, you know, something that I'm sure a lot of people wish they could do as well. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I think anybody can learn to do it, it's uh, mm-hmm. more of just, like, being able to find the right tools to use to do it, and, like, you just gotta practice, it's like with anything, um, some people are just, like, natural talents with a lot of things and like things just come easy easy to them but i Mm -hmm. think a lot of the time that that like any skill like that you can sort of hone by practicing it rather than just like oh i'm not naturally good at it might as well not try it Ah, that's a that's a that's a good point i feel like maybe a lot of people i and i'll admit i've done that myself too I'll, i'll try something new that i see and i'm like hmm uh, why not give that a try or something? And then I'll go try it, and I'm like, this is this this is not good. Either either I'm not good at it, or it's just too confusing or too hard to do. So I don't put in the time to learn it when you could learn how to do said skill if you just take the time to learn how to do it. And I feel like I feel like a lot of people do <laughs> a lot of people do that as well, including myself. So. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, like, I think that people can really learn any skill, but, like, everybody has their own, like, affinities to those skills. So, like, if you want to learn how to draw, like, you might not, you might be a horrid drawler, but as long as Mm -hmm. you, um, as long as you put in enough time, and, like, that's the thing, is, like, not everybody has all the time in the world to just keep learning how to draw. So, like, so sometimes it is hard like that, but I feel like there's anything that if you really, really, really wanted to do something... You could uh, practice enough to be good at it. 
That's true, and you'll and you'll you'll find uh, whether you want to keep doing it or if it interests you enough to keep wanting to learn how to do it pretty quick. I feel that once you um, once you start it, you're you're either gonna you're gonna fail, and then you're gonna be like, mm, I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna keep going, or you're gonna fail and just not really pay any more attention to it, kind of naturally, not even realizing you're doing it. And that's kind of how you find out what you're good at and what your passions are. Because you could pick up a lot of things to try. And some of them, it's like throwing spaghetti to the wall. Like, you're going to find out what sticks and what doesn't. Um, But that's interesting about writing. Uh, To me, it always seemed like writing was like, you kind of just have it. Like, I didn't, I didn't know, I I never thought that like you could, you you could teach yourself how to do that. Which it, which is, it makes sense. I don't know why I ever thought that, but it makes sense. Because you're right. Like, when you said about drawing, like, not, not everyone is just going to be automatically good at drawing you practice and you you get better and it makes sense it's like learn how to ride a bike you don't you don't know how to ride a bike right away you just practice and you uh and you get better at it so that, that's really interesting i never thought about that when it, when it came to writing it just always seemed too hard to me that i didn't i didn't think about it too much right well like and like what you said like when it comes to creativity like creativity is really hard to come by and like people are creative about other things like you could be creative in like what you want to do with art you can be creative about what you want to do with music like creativity is yeah Cre- creativity can be different for everybody so like when it comes to creative like writing um you might have like an idea for a story and like in your brain you can kind of put that story together and for some people it's super easy and for some people it's like you're like how can you even come up with something like that but i feel like if you just like think about it long enough i think eventually you could get to the point where those people are but like you definitely have to put yeah. a lot more work in when it comes creativity wise yeah that that I agree with that that makes sense and it's just when you're writing something it, um it's just it, it all can make an impact like I I almost think of it like an example like um <clears throat> like like a movie um maybe like a certain like camera move or uh a certain piece of music that they put in this one certain part like it'll it it makes the movie so like if you're writing and just just your vocabulary and the words that you choose to use can convey like different emotions or different like impacts into the story for the for the for the um the person reading it. Oh, so, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it it that that's definitely something you learn. It's just it's I don't know. It's it's just it seems like a good exercise because it just gets your creative juices flowing and broadens vocabulary, and it's just a really good creative tool. And I want to I'm gonna try writing a. <laughs> like I have so much trouble writing scripts not for not for the podcast because I don't write scripts for the podcast but for like videos I have so much trouble writing like scripts I'm like man what what do I say like how do I do this so I don't know I, I think I think I should try writing more just not even to show anyone just to just to do it I just feel like that's a good mental exercise yeah for sure and like um even just like writing like short stories or not it doesn't even have to be a short story or anything like that like just writing down like story ideas I feel like it helps you like if you're th- if you're putting yourself in that mindset like the ideas will eventually come so I think that right. like um just doing that would help anyone I'm sure I definitely messed up the intro. I don't, I was like, this is a good, this is a good talking point. So I was like, let's just talk about this for a bit. I was like, I don't even know where I left off on the intro. So that's fine. No, that, that works. You, uh, you, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying, where did we leave off? You, you asked me what we could add to your, your intro. And I said, you were a, a creative scholar. And then we got into, <laughs> right. got into this, this conversation, which is good. I enjoyed that. That was nice. So I guess to start. Uh, I want to know uh, where did the name Inanitus uh, and Sirius come from? Um, so Inanitus was a name I came up with um, before I was even with Artix Entertainment. Um, I honestly, I had this really long name. It had like my actual name in it. Um, and I was like, I need to come up with something just like nice, short, like cool. So I was like looking at stuff and, um, and actually like, I never really was familiar with what this staff member did, but, um, hollow, um, he's now in charge Mm of, um, adventure quest classic. Um, I was like, Oh, that's a cool name, like hollow. So then I was just kind of like, 
on the internet, um, like looking at stuff, like putting things in Google Translate, trying to come up with something cool. And um, eventually it was probably like, I did, I did Google Translate with Latin, and then I was, like, Ooh. looking at, like, synonyms. So, anonymous is actually Latin for, like, like emptiness, like, void, like, hollow. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really have any personal connection to any of those things. I just thought it sounded cool. So It does um, sound pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, oh, inanitus, like, that's cool. Um, and because it's Latin, it's definitely not pronounced inanitus. Um, if it's Latin, it's probably pronounced inanitas. Um, uh-huh. which sounds way different than what I'm intending. So I'm like, no, it's an antis. Like that's how I say it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is this is it right here. Right. Yep. Don't I'm mind like, what they say. This this is it. Yeah, it's like this is how I say it. So this is how it's gonna be. Um, right. So with Sirius, I that was kind of something different for me. So uh, when I started working on Dragon Fable, um, I wanted to like put a piece of myself in the game. So not necessarily like my releases are pieces of myself in the game as well. But like, I wanted something in there for me. Whereas like, that's me. Like this is give the players a glimpse of who I am. Um, and so I wanted to do something like that. And, um, but like the thing with like an ant is, like I said, I always have like an idea of of a story for him in my head and like, it just doesn't work in the context of dragon fable. Like, um, Dra- like Dragon Fable and Naked Worlds have very similar rules, but at some points they're completely different. So mm-hmm. I wanted to come up with something that kind of fit in that thing. And um, so I came up with like Sirius. Um, the name doesn't, name really didn't really come from anything. It was more of just like, just something that I was like, oh, that would be, that's like nice, um, it's simple. Um, so when it came to Sirius, I kind of looked at one of my uh, coworkers, which is Dove, who was, uh, formerly known as Tomics and, mm-hmm. um, and kind of like why he went through his sort of like name change like that. Um, obviously there's character reasons. Like if you, I, I don't know if you play Dragon Fable. See, that's the thing. I, I need to, to play Dragon Fable. I haven't devoted a lot of time to it. I'm pretty sure I created an account, but I haven't, I've always just been AQW and I, I tried to play Dragon Fable uh uh years ago but i i need to i need to get more into it yeah, def- I, I want to because i've heard the story is incredible yeah definitely check it out um so then i won't spoil anything for you but um yeah but no, please there, there is uh there is lore reasons why uh tomics like moved to dove so um but then okay. also like he was saying how like when he was making tomics he it was more of like his younger self and now that he's like grown and matured, like he said that that dove is more in line with like who he is. And I think that's the same thing with me with um Anantis and Sirius is that I kind of have I've grown and matured and Sirius is more of a well serious character. Um right. so I mean I'm I like I incorporate humor in my life. So like Sirius is like oh sure he has like humor in that. But like Inantis is like off the wall, like breaking the fourth wall sort of craziness. And like, Sirius <laughs> is more yeah. um just grounded, I guess. But no, so that's kind of like why I did this shift. But now like I don't really plan on bringing Sirius over to AQ Worlds. I think that AQ Worlds is my place where I can be that um kind of off the wall sort of character. Um, oh yeah. And so I think I'm going to keep them kind of separate in their separate games. Um, right. No, no, that's a, that's, that's interesting. The, the whole, like, like the, the, the younger self and then the, the older self, that's a, that's a, that's a good reason to, I never thought of that. That's a good reason for like character development. Like a whole character arc is now I, this was this one person now here is this person. Uh, That's a, it's a good reason. Um, but yeah, you're right about, um, a A Q world is definitely your place where you can be, have fun and, and puns and breaking forth walls and just going off the wall. Um, definitely that, that's, that's the, uh, the place to do it. Cause it is full of that and it, and it works and it's funny for sure. So. Yeah. I know I did a, um, I did a Nolgith birthday release. Um, I want to mm-hmm. say it was in 2016 maybe. Um, mm-hmm. That was, um, well, and even in the most recent, um, Nolgith birthday release, um, we saw dirt liquor. Um, mm-hmm. so I wrote dirt liquor and when I was making that release, I could not for the life of me, cause I'm like, 
I'm not a legion um, or a nation like a Nolgith nation kind of guy. Um, right. I'm I'm always a good. I always like the good factions. Um, mm-hmm. So like that's sort of my place. So when it came to me writing a Nolgith release, I was like, I have no idea what to name this NPC. I was like, yeah. I don't know what to do with him. So just as like a joke, I just typed in dirt dirt liquor as a placeholder thing. And yeah. Um, yeah. And then both Alina and Mamet was like, no, we should just keep it. And I was like, are you you sure? And they're like, yeah, like, it'd be so funny. And so then um, I was actually, we were just talking about this not too long ago. um, And I looked back at that release and I was like, I can't believe that somebody let me name this character. Like, because Dirt Licker is his Nolgith given name. So like Nolgith gave him that name. He had a name before that. Yeah, could you imagine like this big Nolgith guy like, you're Dirt Licker. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever you say, sir. Yeah, um, I, I sure am. <laughs> I wouldn't get on his bad side. Um, but, no, definitely not. But no, so his original name, and this is canon, it's in the scripts and everything, he says that his name was Dominatron the Awesome. Um, yeah. That was his original name. So <laughs> I was like, who <laughs> let me write this? Because um, this was like my, I want to say it was my second release ever writing for AQ Worlds. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I was like, who let me do this? Um, no, I still look back and laugh at it. And like, I, like, I like it. I'm not like, I'm not ashamed of it or anything or embarrassed or anything. I think it's funny. Um, no, it's, it's cool to be able to look back and see that. And you're like, man, did I, did, is it, did this really go through? Right. Is I was like, how did this that, that bring, that brings up a question for me when you are writing a uh a a character like dirt licker do you so like when you when you're thinking of this character or you have the name at least like dirt licker in your head do like your inner monologue are you like when you type out like things that that character says do you come up with like a voice in your head for this character like oh you know however dirt licker would would sound do you do you ever do that does that help with um like writing for the character and like what they would say um yeah for sure so i um yeah i do that all the time it really helps give them a personality um Mm -hmm. because like if your characters have a personality no one's really gonna care about them um Mm -hmm. and like maybe not every time the personality comes through because like honestly like there's or obviously there's no voice acting or anything like that so like a lot of the times like you're just kind of reading like the text like the npc text the quest text like the um the cutscene dialogues and stuff like that so maybe not all Mm -hmm. the time that personality comes through that like i have in mind but um but it helps me just write them and like kind of like how they would say things um because like i know for sure like definitely with the releases that i'm writing um for the next main story um, I kind of have like Malgor's like voice in my head and like how he sounds yeah. and like how he articulates his ideas and um and you'll kind of see like he goes on um not necessarily a rant but he uh goes on a lecture almost and um yeah and so then I was like kind of thinking of like how this lecture would go like how like when he would raise his voice when he would lower his voice or like when he would like. Cause like when you're, when you're arguing with someone, you get the times where you're really heated. And then like, there's times where like, you're coming down from that heat and then like your voice kind of like gets lower. So like trying to articulate that through the text is always really interesting. Um, but yeah, definitely like his, his voice is just like playing in my head when he's saying these things. And then like, sometimes like I'll like type something and I'm like, and then I'll like say it in my head in his voice. And I was like, oh, those words don't necessarily work. So I like try different words and see stuff to see kind of like how that works. But, um, yeah, definitely having a voice in your head really helps you write a character. I'm trying to picture if AQW did have, uh, voice acting cause it, ha- it has in the past just here and there but if it was like every release like was all voice acted all this what would what would some of these characters sound like because you you might have one idea in your head of what a character might sound like like just take yolgar for example someone might have like i would have an idea of what yolgar would sound like but you might have something totally different and it would just be very interesting to see like what these characters would sound like right and like and that that would be really cool like i think having voice acting would be a double-edged so um double-edged sword where like it'd be really cool to hear these characters and like hear their personality through their voice and stuff but at the same time it kind of like 
um like kills your idea of these people because some people might like a character solely because like they have a certain voice in their head and um yeah yeah so that, like that's a good point so it'd be it'd be kind of like both ways but i think it'd be awesome to have voice acting i know they did voice acting for um i think it was one of the voltaire um events yeah um, yeah, yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. really cool. But I think it'd be cool to like have voice acting all the time. But um, God, it would definitely so add cool. like a whole other layer of work to every release. Oh yeah, but I think would. it'd be uh, awesome. It would, it would, it would be so cool. Hey, one day, maybe one day, that maybe would be so day. cool. Yeah, maybe one day. That that would be that would be awesome. Um, so, uh, what what are I I saw uh, another interview you did with another, I think he was a dragon fable oh, uh, yeah. content creator. And he asked a similar question. Uh, what, what are releases that players uh, might know you for, or, or either they know you for, or they didn't know that you had anything to do with that release. Um, so my biggest release um, and my biggest project was the thorn saga and dragon fable. So, um, okay. In Dragon Fable, there's this organization called the Rose. Um, they show up in book three. Um, and so, like, the Thorn is, like, this side organization. Um, and it's just about them. And then um, Bell, who's, mm-hmm. Bell, who's, like, the main um, character that assists you in that saga. So it's about both of, like, both her and this organization. Um, and so that's, like, my biggest... Uh, release and then it has a sequel um saga called the fear engine saga um only one release mm-hmm. of is is out now um we're just waiting uh for some openings to do the next one um and then with aq worlds i do lately i've been doing a lot of the like event releases so i did yeah. um i did the nolgith birthday um in january this year um i did the dage the seven circles war um oh that was that was mine um Ooh, that was you did that's cool i that that's w- awesome that one has to be one of my favorite uh releases i did for aq worlds yeah i was gonna say how was that that because that because playing it that was a really good release and i was really into that and i really enjoyed that but yeah how was that it was there is there here's another question is there there, there has to be was there a lot of pressure for like the thorn release and the fear engine and then the the seven circles like because i i can imagine for at least adventure quest worlds for like uh a, a, a legion a big legion release like that there's got to be a lot of pressure because people love those so much like they love the legion and they love the nation so whenever something comes uh out uh, of either one of those people just flock to it like people come back to play the game for those releases so there had to be a lot of pressure right for sure yeah um i know like with the the nolgith nation release i did in january um it was one of my first releases coming back to aq worlds so um i did writing i so kind of like my story with arctic entertainment um i started in i mean i've been playing since i think my account says that it started in 2008 um, and then I, ha- I think I had an account before that, that I played a little bit earlier, but 2008 is around the time where I really started playing. Um, but, mm-hmm. uh, 2014, I became a bug tester for the game. Oh, nice. Um, and then I did that for a bit and then, um, I kind of switched over to the mod team, the moderators, um, for a bit, um, only cause like I was doing the bug testing and then it just didn't like, it wasn't like holding my attention um mm-hmm. as much as i thought it was going to when i applied and so that kind of like stunk but they were like and hey, we like want to keep you so like moved me over to the mods and then um and then while i was working with the mods um there was like a group of us um just like staff members that we really wanted to like bring back hero smash and um mm-hmm. and like we were mods so we knew nothing about the logistics of it and stuff like that um, right. but we're like, eh, let's, let's mess around with it. So we kind of like got this group together and we were writing about like what we would do with hero smash and like, just kind of mess around with it. And then, um, I was telling, I was telling Alina about it 
and she got me in contact with uh, Randor the Red, who's the lead, who was the lead on that game, and mm-hmm. um, and we were talking to him, and he wanted me to start um, like writing for it, and so we were just kind of like talking about that, and I wrote a couple design notes for it. Um, in, oh, nice! And that was um in August of 2015. Um, Mm -hmm. unfortunately like design notes is really as far as we were able to get with that. Um, just with the resources that we had, but, um, but that December I was talking to Alina, um, and she knew that I was writing for hero smash. And so she put me in the sky at the time we were using Skype. Um, and she put me in the Skype chat with all of the AQ worlds writers and um she's like you can like look around here and like pay attention and like get um like get some experience like get to see how the process is done and whatever and like i want to say within the week that she added me to it she was like um we were doing this was in the middle of the elemental titans um Mm -hmm. with like the ember sea and bright oak um i think bright oak was just going on and she was like, well, these are the um, elemental titans that are left. Like, who wants these releases? And I was like, I'd be interested in trying the ice one. And so she's like, well, like, let's see what your idea is. And, like, and we'll see where we go from there. So I typed up a five-part a five saga for the, like, the ice area. And I sent it to her. And she's like, you have, like, this done already? And I was like yeah i'm super excited like i'm really eager to like get going and stuff like that (laughs) and she's like she's like this is pretty good um and so for that that frostville the christmas or like the holiday release um Mm -hmm. we did the cryo storm assault with like abel um and there was the um karak um where it had uh i think it was thermax and larissa were the two npcs for that release um Mm -hmm. And so it was me and I believe it's pronounced Aeon. Um, okay. He's a, he was one of the other writers. Um, we worked on that one together. So that was a collab one where it was the two of us writing it. Um, but that was my first release with AQ Worlds was in December of 2015. And then, um, and then in September of 2016, I got moved to, um, to Dragon Fable um only because they were kind of reworking the writing structure of AQ worlds so that's when they kind of mm-hmm. narrowed it down to like alina and mamet handling the story um but they were like we don't want to like just kind of kick you out so we're moving you to dragon fable and i was fine with because i didn't even know writing for dragon fable was an option and dragon fable was like <laughs> yeah that, that... Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dragon Fable is like my my main game growing up, so I was like, oh, I get to write for Dragon Fable. So, um, so that was really cool being able to transfer to that team. Um, and then in December of 2020, um, Alina approached me and she's like, hey, like I've been seeing your Dragon Fable work, um, I really like it, and like we're looking to get um like a second writer in here into AQ Worlds. Like, would you be willing to um help us out? I was like, sure. So I wrote, um, so I did like the New Year's release for 2020. Um, uh-huh. and that was kind of like one of my first releases coming back. Um, but going back to your question about the, like the pressure of writing like a Nolgith Nation and, uh, a Legion release. Um, when I wrote yeah. that, cause I, I believe it was in January. Um, when I wrote that Nolgith release, um, I was like, oh, I'm super excited. Like, I get to do all this stuff. Because um, one of my favorite things to write about is, um, I think the proper term is cosmology, um, which, okay. is, which is like the um, like the gods and like the, the magic structures and like all that stuff. So like the creation. Oh, yeah. Creation stuff. So like, I love writing all that sort of stuff. And so um, I introduced Adamonde, which is Nolgith's like master. You see him, he's like the yeah. giant floating head thing um and so i got to like write him and that was really cool um and i was like oh like i was like this is gonna be so cool and then um i was so focused on writing like Anna Monday and um kind of like doing all this stuff that i completely forgot how to write not necessarily cl- completely forgot but i completely didn't focus on the hero 
And one of the main feedbacks that I got from that release was, wow, the hero seems like a jerk in this release. And <laughs> I looked back, I was like, oh, crap. Um, yeah. I was like, they are right. Um, and I felt bad because I was just like, man, I should have paid more attention. Um, mm -hmm. And so when it came time to do that Legion release, I was like, I am like going all in on this. Like, um, so I, when I was writing that one, like the pressure was really on because I just had the Nolgith one that, um, not necessarily like that didn't do as well as I thought. It just didn't hit the right notes that I wanted it to. Um, and so I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going all in on this one. And so that one was, um, there was like a lot of pressure to get that one right. And, um, and I'm like, and I'm, I'm proud of my Nolgith release. I thought it was good. And I was, pr I, oh, yeah. um, even more proud about the, um, the seven circles release. I thought that that one was, is one of my favorite ones I ever got to write. Um, that one was just cool in general because it was a war. I don't really get to write a lot of wars. So, um, mm -hmm. so I got to do that. I think it was my only second war cause I did the fire war, um, for AQ worlds. Um, yeah a couple summers ago um so this was like my second my second war and um i got to work with dage which was really cool because he's normally working on um aq3d and yeah. so he created like all the boss art for the for the seven circles and so i got to like meet him and like this is a guy that because like i said i played since 2008 so this was like a guy yeah. whose art i was seeing like he joined after I like started playing. And so like, I kind of saw his whole like career with AE and this mm -hmm. was like a guy's like, Oh, he's so cool. Like I love his art. Like I love the, I love the Legion stuff. Um, I love how it looks and everything. And then all of a sudden I'm in a discord chat with him and, uh, we're chatting it up about the release and like how, what we're going to do. And like, um, and like, I'm like, I'm handling your birthday release. Like you should be telling me what to do. <laughs> like not asking me talk what I about, think talk about pressure right and so like i was like i was like you should be telling me what to do not like what i think of things like it was so weird um but no so that was a really cool release i loved working with dage um he's such a nice guy um for all the for all the undead minions he has he's such a nice guy yeah <laughs> yeah that man that must have been i can just i'm trying to imagine how that must have been because I've always been a fan of Dage and like his art and the opportunity to connect with him. But not only that, but like work with him and collaborate and put your ideas together and ask questions. And that that must have been that must have been something else. That must have been cool, especially for as long as you've been playing. Yeah, it was really cool. And like in um, and when I was coming up with the idea for that release, because I'll, I'll be honest, when I when they first presented me with that release opportunity, my mind was like blanking. I was like. I have no idea what to do with the Legion right now. And then I thought back to one of the birthday releases that he did where um, he was talking about how like part of his soul was locked away and um, like Dage's soul. And so I like took that mm -hmm. and I was like, Hey, um, what, what do you think about this? Like, I was like, I don't know if you ever like, plan on finishing this like what what was going on with it and he goes like this is something that players have been wanting like completed for a while now like i think he said it was almost like 10 years that like this wow. like th that this like lore tidbit was like doing that he's like it'd be awesome if you were able to like, kind of like give them that and um and so like when i was like writing and stuff like when uh we were wrapping up the release and stuff he was telling me how much he liked the release and stuff and that just felt awesome that like one of these people that i looked up to while i was playing the game is just like telling me how much he liked my work I, it was just awesome oh i can imagine that must have been very gratifying just like wow oh for like, sure like you you definitely probably at that point you're like yeah i I I got something here and and it's being noticed by by big people um within AE. That that that's super interesting your your story. So you didn't just uh like okay, like you said you've been playing for since at least 08. So it's like you didn't just like come in like playing it and then you're like oh, I'm a writer and then boom, you were like a writer for the game. Like no, you were a tester and then you were mod. So you kind of went through these different things before 
you finally got to being a writer for the game. So that that's interesting. Yeah, um, I'm sure that there were some people that were brought on just straight up as writers. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. my pet that was like how I kind of got to where I am now. So like you 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 know how 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 like the mods work and and uh, like bug testing. You you kind of have a little bit of background in that too. So that that that's really cool. How long have you been? writing not necessarily how long have you been writing for ae but just kind of on your own time just in general how long have you been uh been writing professionally my professional career started with um with ae and like it's been it's been completely with ae i haven't published anything outside of um outside of the company um but i like i've always done writing as a hobby um for as like for as long as i can remember like as a kid i remember going in my parents basement where our old computer with dial up was and i would uh, oh dial up oh oh, yeah Yeah. um and like pulling that up and putting a floppy disk in and saving my uh stories on there and like there was a I can guarantee you that nobody wants to read what was on those floppy disks. So I'm glad that um, nothing can read floppy disks anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. It's kind of, it's sealed in a tomb now. No one can, right, no one can get to it. Right. Um, so, but no, I've always loved writing and it's always been like kind of a hobby of mine. Um, and like me and my neighbors, we would always like play pretend. And I was sort of like the, the story writer for our play pretend story, like games like playing outside and stuff so um right so i always like came up with stories and um it's always just something that i love doing i was gonna ask you if you did you like how'd you get started in it and like was it did you go to school or a hobby but you you told me it was a it was a hobby of yours which is really interesting like the whole play pretend thing and you mentioning dial up on a floppy disk just blasted me to the to the past because i remember (laughs) on my computer uh, or not not my computer, but uh, the computer at home it was like dial up. I tried to do things and dial up was that was that was a time that was something else with floppy disks. We have uh, we have come very far. Um, it made me think that like the friends that I have are all like um, and when I say all like I only mean probably like th- three or four because it's weird. Like I, I figured out like growing up that like y- you can have a lot of friends but then like the main friends that you stick with like years down the road is like actually very small. Right. Um, Definitely. Like I, like I, like my main circle of friends is like four or five people um, compared to, you know, a couple friends I had in high school and all that. But like the ones that I, I, I tend to lean more towards are like the people that ha- are like creative in, in some way, one way or another. Um, like, like my friend, my two of my friends, their brothers, they've always been good at, when you said the uh play pretend thing they, they've always been good at coming up with stories for that kind of stuff like we always have conversations where we'll come up with a character or this just like a random person like a neighbor that we that we've known for so long like oh like what if bob like said this and then we create like a whole story for bob and then like we we just pretend in that way and just we're creating these stories and we it's just little inside jokes and it's funny things and it, when you said the the childhood play pretend thing, that made me made me think of that. I was I was like, wow, yeah, I I remember doing stuff kind of like that. It was it was a good time. Yeah, and like I've I've tried to always hang on to that sort of create creativity from when I was playing pretend and stuff. So like, there's there's times right. even now where like, and I don't do it as wildly as I was as a kid, but like I'll be like playing a scene in my head and I'm like, where does this go? And so I'd like kind of like put myself in my room and kind of like act out like what's going on like not like super serious but i'm like okay if they're standing here doing yeah. this i was like what is like the bad guy doing or like or if they're yeah. fighting like and their swords are locked like what can he do to like get out of this and i'll like have mm-hmm. my like hands in that like position or stuff and so like i still kind of yeah. like hang on to that and still kind of use it um but yeah, and then uh, what you were saying where um, you weren't sure if it was like school or anything. I did go to school. I do have my bachelor's degree in creative writing. So um, Wow, nice. So that that really helps. Um, I think that I learned a lot um, with my college classes. Um, definitely mm-hmm. with um, things called workshops where what you do is you type up your work and give it to all of your classmates, um, which is nerve-wracking. Ooh. 
Oh, oh no. I bet that is so... Oh, no. I can just... I don't even want to think of that because I'm so nervous. To, like, I was always so nervous to do, like, present things in front of the class. Oh, no. I can't imagine. Now, imagine a class that's whole purpose was you type something up, hand it to them. They read it overnight um, and they mark it up, oh, no. mark it up, tell them. And then they um, then the next day you stand there and you just have to listen to them talk. You're not you're not allowed to interrupt them. You're not allowed to do anything oh. like you get your you get your time oh, no. to talk when they're done. But up until that point, you just go around this table of 20 people, um, including oh, your teacher. Man. And they're just going through what um, could have been better in your story. Oh, man. You're probably sitting there like, man, I cannot wait for this class to end. <laughs> oh, man. I can't imagine. But but being put in out of your comfort zone and being put in a weird, uncomfortable situation like that can only help you improve. So it's, it's a good thing. It may be very uncomfortable at the time, and you might like hate every second of it, but... It, it, it helps well definitely and like and i always took it as a challenge i always wanted to write something that when i handed it to like my classmates that they would find as little wrong with it as possible and it, it just made me mm -hmm. be extra critical of it and for whatever reason it didn't cross my mind to like do that with just like my personal writing that like i shouldn't be going through my personal writing and doing the like putting in the same effort that i was until i was like mm -hmm. in that scenario like until i started seeing what people were looking to be wrong in my um in like in my writing i didn't know what to be like looking for while i was writing when you said earlier that you've never written or i don't, I don't want to say written excuse me you've never published anything outside of ae like have you ever thought of of doing that kind of just, like having your own like personal like passion project like you're writing like a like say a book or something because because i just my friend that i mentioned earlier he just out of nowhere, like he was writing a book and he just published it. And I was like, what? Like, and I was going to, he was telling me the whole process of that. And I was like, that's insane. That's so crazy. Like I could, I could never do that. Have you ever, cause he didn't, I didn't know. Like I didn't know. I don't, I'm sure he told a couple people, but I just had no idea. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, I wrote a book. And I'm like, what? Like, do you, do you, have you ever thought of like wanting to do something like that or you know have you are you currently working on something if if you can say and if you don't mind you don't have to but like have you ever just sat there and and thought of like your own like passion project that you kind of just keep to yourself and you're in this own world and then whenever you're ready to release it or whatever you, you will like have you ever thought of or are you currently doing something like that um no i've definitely thought of it in a, in the past and i've um and like there's been like ideas like um, when i was in college i was working on a book and i got like halfway through writing this book and then, mm -hmm. like, halfway through, I decided to change something, but it required the entire story to be changed. Um, oh, yeah. And so, like, I had to start all over. And so, like, I kind of, like, got the first couple chapters rewritten, and then I just kind of, like, lost the energy to do it. So, like, it's still sitting there. I'll probably get back to it. Um, That'd but, be cool. But currently, I've been working on, um, I've been doing, I want to do light novels, um, where okay. it's, like, um, I, it's something that... Lately, I've been kind of getting into uh, watching anime, and mm. um, and I really have been like enjoying it, and I like the stories that are told in anime, and so I've been writing yeah. something that like I kind of want to turn into an anime. Uh, oh, that would be awesome. And so I've been working on that whenever I have free time, but between like oh yeah, I got like a full time job, I got a family, I got. Uh, mm -hmm got a stuff that i'm working on too so um finding that free time is not always easy but i'm always kind of like working on it in my head and so um right. so when i get the chance to just kind of sit down and get it all knocked out i'm really looking forward to that but that's that's good drawing inspiration there like especially from anime like i i, I myself also have um kind of started to tr try to get into anime like i remember growing up i always watched like dragon ball z and stuff like that and then i rewatched all of dragon ball z and like all the dragon ball movies and everything like in my adult life and i just i loved it so much and it, it's hard for me like i have i have like a lot of friends and I, I i when i say a lot of friends i mean like at work like my coworkers that mm. that love anime like that is their life and i'm like man I like I know anime is so cool and like the the stories and the art especially but the, the, they're always 
really good, intricate, crazy uh, stories. And I'm like, I wish I could like just dive into some random one and just watch it. Like, it's so hard for me to to find one that I like. I, it, I But it's it's super interesting, like, when you do find one that you like. Because you're like, that was a really good story. That was really good. Yeah, and, like, anime is, like, I, I always catch myself doing this the same thing, where, like, I think anime is, like, this whole, like, separate thing. But, um, like, in... In the end of the at the end of the day, like it's a TV show. Like you're not gonna like every yeah. single TV show. So like you're not gonna like oh, yeah. every single anime. So like you gotta find like that anime that you like, and the, there will be animes that you don't like. So like and there's so many to choose from. Oh yeah, there's, there's so, so many. many animes, and they're 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 literally about everything. One of my coworkers, um, at my job was because she'll she'll talk to me about anime, you know, and I I she knows I'm. I find it interesting, so I always I always listen to what she has to say. Like she'll tell me there's one that she watched. It was it was about volleyball. Oh like, yeah. And she said the story was so good. And I'm like, what? Like about volleyball? Like when I think anime, I think of like Dragon Ball Z. I think of fighting, like like these powers and stuff like that. But I'm like, wait, no, there's literally just one about this. Like a, like a, just a, a little slice of life. And I'm like, right. what? Like. I don't I never I never thought that and and it's so popular and stuff like that and I'm like wow that's it's interesting yeah and like that's the funny thing is that like when you're talking about like the slice of life anime is like there's been times where like I don't like I don't normally like slice of life tv shows but every now and then I find a slice of life anime that I'm like oh this is really good um yeah and I yeah I don't know what it is but it's it's crazy that there's so much out there yeah there, there is, there is a lot, and they're hard to make. And more, more power to those people, because you know you got to be really creative to be able to do something like that. So that, that's really cool, though, that you're that you're working on something like that, like in your head, and uh, and, and want uh, to take take time to when you get it to to uh, commit it to writing. I think that that's really inspiring and really cool. And it, whenever that gets done, or whenever you do. Uh, I'm ready to, I'm ready to see it. I'm there. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. So like when you're, when you're writing for the, your little side project that you have or, or, or just writing in general, um, do you have any inspiration do, or do you have, do any other authors or, or their work or any other piece of writing that, that kind of like inspires you? In a way, inspiration is always weird. You can get inspiration from the weirdest things. You can get inspiration from yeah. like from music. You can get inspiration from like news stories. Like, like it's so weird. Like how inspiration That's just true. Like, um, like going to your question, um, Stephen King's one of my favorite writers. Um, oh yeah, and like it is my favorite book. Um, oh yeah. So I I read that all like 1200 pages of it um it is so good but um but like so i enjoy stephen king but like i don't see myself incorporating a lot of his stuff in like in my work anywhere but like it's just Mm -hmm. something that like i enjoy but um a lot of my like inspiration comes from just things that i um that i enjoy and like it could be random things so like um like the for instance the seven circles release uh, with Dage, mm-hmm. um, that's based off of Dante's Inferno. Um, yeah. And that was, it's one of my favorite pieces of literature. I think it's so cool. Um, and so like, that I'm, is a really, that, that, I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, that is a really intense, like just a really good story. Yeah. So I like tried to incorporate as much of it as I could in, um, that seven circles release. So, like, Mm -hmm. um, if you look at, like, the maps, like, in, because, like, you're going through all seven circles, and, like, there's nine circles in, um, in Inferno, but we had to kind of condense it, um, but if you're, like, playing through them and you, like, look at the map, um, I try to incorporate some of the stuff, so, like, um, I think it was, like, the gluttony circle, um, Mm -hmm. there's, like, trash all over the ground, and, like, that's how it's described in the, in the book, um, and then like there's one circle I can't think of it on the top of my head, but um, it was talking about how everything was on fire, and so like when you're playing that release, like when you get to that circle, like there's fire everywhere. Yeah. Um, right. And then there's um, I think it was the sloth and wrath room. Um, it's supposed to be mm-hmm. like a swamp 
And so, like, when you get to that area, it's all swampy. Um, and so, like, I just tried to incorporate as much of that as I could. Um, and, like, there's, like, the gatekeeper of violence who is that minotaur. Um, mm-hmm. Like, the, the, the Greek the Greek mythology minotaur is like what is in charge of the gates of violence. So like, that's why that monster's there. Um, gotcha. Okay. So like, it's just from that story. So like, in, um, and then like other video games are, um, inspiring and like, um, so I did the, the celestial past, uh, releases that are birthday. Um, where you go to the celestial realm and you like go back in time um, mm-hmm. and you like see like the creation of the celestials and everything. And, right. um, and so one of my favorite video games is destiny. Um, it's made by Bungie. It's the people that made Halo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and when I, whenever I play that game, the lore in that game is so crazy because like they throw in like all of like these scientific terms and, um, I need like someone else to translate those for me. So I always look at the internet. I'm like, what did this mean? And they're like, Oh, it means that it's like around a black hole. And I was like, Oh, okay. Um, I was like, that makes so much more sense. So like they use like all these big scientific terms and like all that fun stuff. And so when I was writing that celestial past release, um, there's Azalith, who's the villain. Um, Mm -hmm. she's like the evil celestial. Um, when she does her big rant, she's talking about how, um, how like atoms on atoms are crashing into each other like that her power isn't isn't destruction it's creation where she's creating so much in in a single space that it destroys itself um and that it's like it's like um she says like it's an equation that um that the bright one came up um up with and um and so, like, just the, a lot of that, like, talk that she gives in that speech, um, mm-hmm. it was a very Destiny villain-inspired, where she's, like, very much about, like, this is the formula for the world, and, like, I know the formula, and I know how to utilize it to get what I want. Um, mm-hmm. And so, she was one of my favorite um, villains to write um, for AQW. Um, but just a lot of stuff kind of inspires me to write. Um, surprisingly music is one of my biggest inspirations. I listen to, um, I have like my, my normal music that I listen to in the car. Like, um, I, I listen to like a lot of alternative and like punk pop and stuff like that. Right. Um, right. But every now and then when I'm, like, trying to get inspired, I'll listen to, like, instrumental music or, like, video game soundtracks. Yes! Oh, okay. I, I, sorry to interrupt. I do the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I love listening to, like, mute, like, um, sorry, I like listening to, uh, like, movie scores. Oh, definitely. And, oh, they are so good. And, and, um, and, and video game scores. I, I find myself doing that a lot. Aside, obviously, like you said, from the normal music, uh, you listen to, I, I also do that so I can, I can relate to that because it it's just i don't know what it is man about it it's just great to listen to and like like for example really quick like red dead redemption one and two and, and the last of us and stuff like that those games like their music is so good and i will always find myself going back and listening to those soundtracks from those games or or other movies yeah for sure and like um, one of my favorite is uh final fantasy 15 um Uh i think that the music of that game is so good um so like i'll find myself like listening to music from that game and then like i hear like where the music gets like super excited or like stuff like that and i like in my brain i'm thinking of like whatever release i'm working on and thinking of how it like fits in that and like where like the beats are like um like swords hitting or like weapons clashing or like what's right. going on during like with the music and stuff and that um that really helps me um kind of like come up with stuff to do that's awesome it, when when you were talking about destiny it made me think i i have played destiny before and the story is really good i had a friend who well my friend actually introduced me to to destiny he was super into into destiny like he would play online all the time and i'm not I, aside from aqw i don't play many online games um but I, I i tried that out and, and the story like like you were saying is really good and the lore is really interesting I, I don't know like sci-fi is 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 interesting to me um 
there, there's a there's like some things in sci-fi like some games or, or movies and i'm like i don't really like that but it, when you hit like just something i don't know how to explain it but you like you know it when it happens it's just like wow yeah this is good i like this yeah there, there is something there's something about that game because like i know it's not necessarily the most uh well received game um in mm-hmm. modern time but there's something about it that just really drew me in um i don't know story story driven games are are good i, I enjoy a good old good story driven game oh definitely yeah and then um the last big thing that sort of like uh inspires my releases are a lot of like the people that i work with um so like mamet was like the first person that um when i started writing um we worked really closely on whatever i was working on um Mm -hmm. uh and that was a lot of fun and she's she's awesome um and we were even talking about like um, cause she was writing her own personal, like short stories and everything. And she was sharing those with me and asking for my insight on them and stuff. Um, so I got to kind of like see her writing style outside of AE and that was always really cool. Um, mm-hmm. and then like Alina, Alina did a lot of the writing, um, for like the 13 Lords of Chaos and then the early Elemental Titans. And, um, yeah. and so like talking to her is always really cool. Um, I, I love working with Alina. Her, the patience that woman has is infinite. <laughs> I have no, I can imagine it, it has to be very, very high. Yeah. I have no idea how she has so much patience. Cause like between yeah. like everybody, like asking her questions and like, cause she's like in charge of everything. So like, mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know how many times a day that I ping her asking her opinions on stuff while she's trying like while she's like in a meeting or all this fun yeah. stuff and i'm like the patience that you have not to be like an anxious like shut up i need to get this done like <laughs> i'm surprised that i've never gotten a message like that she's always in a good mood i have no idea how she how she does it so that's very hard to to have pa- <laughs> i like i have patience to a point and then i'm like okay oh same, <laughs> I, same. there's no way i could have as much much uh patience as she does because she's just always getting blown up on twitter asking oh, for questions sure. and for like sure. and like the same question multiple times oh i people. know so it's like oh my gosh and she's always nice she always has to they're like oh yeah you know and and answer them I'm like man i don't know how you do that i'm thinking to myself like i don't get that i can't like i i don't have that much patience yeah and um like i was saying earlier that um aeon and i started we wrote that um release at the same time and that was like our our first like kind of intro to writing and mm-hmm. um so we were kind of always sort of not necessarily, not necessarily compared to each other but like um it was kind of like when when we wrote that release um we were working on some other projects afterwards kind of independent of each other and um i think it was Mamet and Alina were talking about us and they were saying that um that Aeon's writing style was very much like Alina's and then mine was very much like Mamet's and so oh wow so it kind of felt like we were, um, like the legacy, like the next, the next gen. So that was always really cool. Um, Aeon has since like moved to Dragon Fable. Um, he moved, he moved at the same time I did actually. Um, and so he's still there. Um, but it was, it's cool to have somebody to like compare yourself to and see like oh definitely see like how you both are growing as the years go on yeah yeah Mamet, Mamet's uh her writing is is really really good it is like, her 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 stories are are incredible um so that, that that's really cool to to have them say like oh yeah your your writing's like a lot like Mamet's like that's like whoa cool <laughs> that yeah. must be really awesome but yeah my other other co-workers that um ca- kind of inspire me um dove and verly over at um or Ver- verly russ um mm-hmm. over at dragon fable um they're just awesome um dove's like comic saga and like the soul weaving lore um if when you get to dragon fable definitely check out the soul weaving it's um i know a lot of players consider that the best uh story in in dragon fable um, right. So he's kind of like the mind behind that, and just um, playing through that. Like when I was playing Dragon Fable, like I saw Soul Weaving, and I was like, "Oh, this is awesome! Like this is 
this is my thing. Like, this is going to be like when this class comes out, like I'm getting this class, I'm not taking it off. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, it was so cool. So, um, like getting to work with him is insane. Like the fact that like, oh, I bet I, that's incredible. Yeah. The fact that like I was playing his releases and I was like, wow, this guy's so cool. And now like I could just hit him up on discord and be like, Hey, like I saw this meme you would like, um, <laughs> um it, it's awesome. And then Verley is just like, he's so, he's so good at writing. It's an, it's mm-hmm. scary. Um, like it's scary yeah like how like how many steps he's thinking ahead is insane and like he's right he's so good at um establishing systems and um like magic systems or Mm -hmm. like um like cosmology systems like like seeing his his thought process on things it's awesome um and he's very i don't want to say strict because that's not necessarily the word um Mm -hmm. But that's going to be the word I'm going to use because I can't think of a better one to describe what it is. But he's very strict yeah. in what gets put into Dragon Fable. Um, mm-hmm. And he's very sure, like, there's been times where, like, I submit a release and then he's like, well, that doesn't work because it takes place during this time. And if it's taking place during this time, like, the hero's also doing this at this time. So, like, we can't be doing that. And I was like, how do you remember all of this? Yeah, there. Oh, Yeah. That that's a really wow yeah that's a good point because there's there's so much story how how do you remember all that right he has this all just like in his brain just like he's like well that doesn't fit like with the timeline so he's like you can change this detail and then it will work and I'm like how how do you so like just like working with him I feel has just made me a better better writer in the um. Like, even when I first started there, like, just the short time when, from when I was st- first starting working with him, um, mm-hmm. my writing has gotten so much better um, because he, like, knows what to look for. And um, so I hold him in, like, the highest admiration. Like, he's so good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because if he, if, the, if he tells you these, like, what will and what will not work, and you're like, man, like, how do you remember all that? that that's crazy. Like, it, it'll help you remember for next time. Definitely. It's almost like a, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a, a lesson, uh, to be learned. You're like, oh, wait, I can't, I can't do that, because this is happening, and the hero's doing this, but then this person's doing this. Oh, wait, I, I can just change this, and it'll work. Like, there, there's, there's a lot to be learned from that. Definitely, and, like, um, I always feel bad because he's my new, uh, um, writing workshop guy. Um, Mm kind of like what I was doing in school. So I would like kind of write something up and then like give it to him and be like, Hey, can you like look this over for me? And, um, and like my new thing now is like, like I said, when I was doing those writing workshops, I was always like, I'm going to make this perfect for this workshop or whatever. So now like my, my writings, like I'm going to make this uh, perfect for Verly. Like, yeah. it's like my, my <laughs> new challenge for myself is having him find nothing wrong with it. Um, it's going to be the Verly stamp of approval. Right. I know that's the, that's what I look for a lot of the times. And like, I feel bad because there's times where like I'm writing something for AQW and I'm like, Hey, can you like look this over? Like there's something that's like, I don't know if this is like, if this is going to work. Like, I don't know. And he looks at, and he'll mm-hmm. look it over and he's like, yeah, like it looks good. And like, he, he's not very um well acquainted with AQW cause he's just, he's got so much going on in uh, Dragon oh, yeah. Fable, but, um, but I appreciate that he takes the time to help me out when he can. Oh yeah. You got to hold those people, people close because the, they'll, they'll help you just become a better person. And then in this case, like a better writer. Oh, for sure. How did you get introduced to AE? Okay. So actually what I should say is how, when you first started playing Dragon Fable, um, and Adventure Quest Worlds and all that, how did you find out about those games? Like, how did you get introduced? Cause, cause my, like my, me, my, my friend introduced me on the school bus one day. And I went home, made an account, played, been playing ever since. What, like, how did that work out for you? Um, so when I was, um, I want to say probably early middle school, um, mm-hmm. I was at my friend's house and we were playing, uh, we were playing it and, or we were just kind of like messing on their computer and, um, an ad for the original Adventure Quest was like on, I think it was Newgrounds we were on. Um, yes, Newgrounds. Yep. 
and there was an ad for it. So we like clicked on it. And we're like, oh, this game like looks cool. Like I bet I bet we have to pay for it or download something. And like sure enough, right. you could play it right there in your browser. And it was like our new favorite thing. Um, so we made we made like an adventure quest account, and we we're playing on that. And then, um, I feel like a few maybe like a year or two later, I feel like Dragon Fable came out. Um, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, like, I was like, this is like a, that Adventure Quest game, but like the art is like updated and it looks a little different. And like, you can actually walk around cause uh, like Adventure Quest classic, you just kind of click where you want to go and stuff. Um, yeah. like it's just like different frames. It's not necessarily like a, like a walk around area. Um, mm-hmm. and so I was like, oh, in Dragon Fable, like you can walk around and stuff like this is so cool. So, um, so then I kind of just stuck with Dragon Fable and then I saw that AQW was coming out and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, I was like, it's Dragon Fable, but we can we can all play together at the same time because it's me and um, my two neighbors that were brothers. And uh, yeah. I was like, oh, we can all play this game at the same time. And so we got into kind of like AQW. Um, so I was like, I was, I was playing Dragon Fable like when book one and book two were out and then I was playing um AQ for like the whole like dragon or the chaos saga and then um yeah. when I got m- moved so I joined like right after the chaos saga ended it was um right when bright oak was going on um okay. was when I joined the team and then so I kind of focused more on AQW so I kind of like fell off dragon fable for a bit um and then when uh when I got moved to Dragon Fable, I was like, I had to catch up on all of book three. So I was playing catch up on all of book three and I kind of fell off of AQW. And then Alina was like, hey, I want to come back to AQW. So then I had to get all caught back up on AQW. And now I'm happy yeah. to say that I'm uh, caught up on both now. So that's good. You got to juggle both of them. That, that can be difficult. Yeah, Dragon Fable, I'm not, I don't have like, um, it's not as frequent as uh, AQW with like the releases that I work on, but. Um, but I still like checking in. Uh, you you talked about uh, earlier about I think I think I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said that your whole writing professional career has been with Dragon Fable uh, and EQW. Am I am I wrong in saying that? Uh, no, that that's correct. Yeah, that was going to be uh, the next question, but I just wanted to touch on that again and, and, and clarify that we we did we did touch on that and answer that. Um, so when you. <laughs> Because you were saying uh, in your in your childhood and your youth and all that, you you've always been kind of just like the guy who came up with like the the lore and the stories for things and and writing. Um, when you found uh, Dragon Fable and, and Adventure Quest Worlds, did you think like in your head like one day like I'm gonna write for this game, or did you think like oh okay yeah I'm gonna this is gonna be like something that I want to do like I'm gonna try to do this. I'm one day my name I'm gonna write for this game. Did you ever did you ever think that or did it kind of just the opportunity came and you're like, you know what? I'm going to take it and run with it and do it. Um, no, I always actually wanted to write for, um, I actually wanted to write for AQW first. Um, I just remember, um, like even playing pretend, like I said, when we were kids, um, we would do, Mm -hmm. uh, AQW, like play pretend sometimes. And, uh, but I was like, I was like, I could write stories for this. And like, I'd tell my friends, like my ideas for it. And they'd be like, Oh yeah, that'd be so cool. Um, I think one of like my original ideas was like a bug slayer island or something. I don't know. Where well, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe maybe I'll uh, hop around to it or something. Um, it had something to do with slaying big bugs and like there'd be a bug slayer class or whatever and um, all oh, that. That's cool. All that fun stuff. Um, that that, that fits AQW. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt again. That, that that like totally fits. I know. Like, I was like, I was like, no one bad AQW eye. is. No one, no one bad eye. You'd just be wearing giant insect parts and just like, <laughs> uh, just yeah, killing bugs. Um, but no, that's something I always wanted to do. And um, so when I got like accepted as a bug tester, I was like, I'm one step closer to doing like what I want to do. And so I was just trying, yeah. I was trying as hard as I could to um, get on the writing team and eventually just happened to work out. And here I am. That's good that it worked out. And, it, and it's, it's kind of ironic and funny about the bug tester thing. Like you had this whole idea of like a bud, a bug, excuse me, sign like Island and all this. And then you get a bug tester. <laughs> like, right, like, yes, I know. I'm so I much closer. To... That's so funny. <laughs> that is funny. Um, so to me, 
uh, writing is a very, it's a very important and interesting art form. Um, and I think you can just tell so much story and, and so much emotion through the words and how you use them. Kind of like how I said with like, like to me, like a movie, like the, like 50% of the movie or even more is like the music and like the sound and that, that like without that, you're not going to really have a movie or a story because that stuff can influence how a person feels about a character or, or decisions a character makes. Um, so if like, you don't mind, can you walk me through um, like your creative process when it comes to writing a release for Dragon Fable or Adventure Quest Worlds? So it's, it's different for both of them. Um, like it's pretty similar, but sometimes it's a little different. Um, one of like, so for AQW, I, um, a lot of the times Alina will approach me with like an idea that, um, that like has been bounced around and she's like, Hey, do you want to pick up this, like this release? And so, um, Mm -hmm. so like there's a lot of things that are planned and then, um, so like for instance, like the Nolgith birthday and the, um, the Legion, um, release, like those were things that were already planned and um mm-hmm. she like asked me to pick up so um there's not a lot of times where i'm just like writing something completely new um it's always like working with like a lot of existing stuff um so yeah. it depends on like what i'm doing there but for instance when it's something that's already existing so like um for the seven circles one like i said the first thing that i did to kind of draw inspiration of what to even do with that release as I looked back at like what was already shown and seeing like, how can Mm -hmm. I expand that? And so, um, so then I remember like no, or Dage talking about, um, like his NPC was talking about how his soul was locked away. And I was like, did we ever touch up on this? Like maybe I missed something while I was working on dragon fable. And they're like, no, like we haven't touched on it. So then I just like took that and ran with it. And, um, it's always finding that first thing that you want to start working with and then just expanding it. And so a lot of the times when I'm finding that first piece, um, I look back at like stuff that we've already done. Um, Mm -hmm. just finding like those old, those old releases or like just old, like lore tidbits and expanding them. I'm trying to think of any other sort of release that, um, that recently that I I've done that with. Um, I think a lot of my recent ones have just been um working on stuff like i've been doing a lot of like the holiday releases so like i said the new year's one um Mm -hmm. and i have no idea where the idea for that new year's one came i was just like let's make a giant time eating monster name it corona side and that's uh, perfect (laughs) yeah and i was like and let's just go with it um and uh but yeah so sometimes like it's just random um, but a lot of the times I try to look at like old stuff that we've done and just kind of go with that. Um, but like with Dragon Fable, it's not, um, it's not nearly as the same. Um, basically when I write for Dragon Fable, we have like sagas that are like several quests long. I want to say that the Thorns one is like nine or 10 releases long. Um, wow. so I have a lot more time to like tell a story with that one, um, with dragon fable. And so trying to find a story that I want to tell in that amount of time is, um, that takes a lot, a little more work. And, um, and a lot of the time I will talk that over with Verly and, um, try to figure out where I want to go. So like when I finished the thorns, um, well, even when I started the thorns, I wrote, a release it was my very first release for dragon fable um introducing mm-hmm. the villain um his name's theano and um it was just introducing him and then there's these robots called the manaphages and um that sounds cool <laughs> yeah so they're just like these robots that just eat mana and just like drain it from people um that sounds so cool yeah you'll definitely have to check it out but um yeah, I, I really need to. <laughs> like, I don't know what I've been, what I'm doing. I need to. I might actually do that after we're done recording. I might just be like, you know what? Bam, I'm gonna mm-hmm. pop on, create an account, and start playing mm-hmm, for sure. I mean, you can hop right. That's in book three, but you can hop straight in with book three, and it doesn't like, um, it doesn't really like affect your playthrough. So, gotcha. Um, and you can always go back and do book one and book two. But yeah, so when I was writing that first Thorn release, though, with the Manifages and Theano, um, it was supposed to be a standalone release. And um, 
when I like finished it, um, Verily was like, Hey, do you want to make this a, like a saga? Like you can just keep going with this. And I was like, sure. So we went back and changed the ending of it so that it wasn't just a standalone. And, um, that's just how the Thorn saga just started. And so then 10 releases later, we have like the fina- the, the, like the end of it. And, um, mm-hmm. so that one, I was not even planning on doing a whole storyline with it just kind of like came from that um and then fear engine that i'm working on now um that one i talked over with verily and thinking of of ways that um we could like just do something new and um i actually took a character from the thorn saga um her name's the phobiest and she shows up like halfway through the thorn saga as like a side Mm -hmm. character and um so then i took her and made her the villain of this new one um of the fear engine and it's just going on with her character now and then like sirius shows up um so the first the first quest sirius shows up and that's where you first meet him um and right now it's like i said it's just the one release but um yeah yeah i like we have the whole thing planned out um but a lot of the times when it comes to like planning out, like talk about like the process, um, planning it out, Mm -hmm. I always like, normally there's always like, like what I said, that one piece of the puzzle that, um, that I start with. And sometimes that can even be like how the story ends. So like, for instance, with the, with the fear engine saga, like I know like the ending, um, like I know like the big climactic, like final battle sort of thing. And like how they right. and like how they beat the villain, and then I write from that. Like I write backwards almost. Gotcha. So you you know the ending, and then you, you kind of you fill in the the empty space in between. Right, and and not all the time does that work. Um, I know like a lot of people. Um, it it's called uh, I'm trying to think of a like plot driven writing. It's kind of like what it's called. Um, I know a lot mm-hmm. of people say it doesn't really work and i can see where it doesn't because um it's definitely not my where where it falls through is like not my strong point is um that people people really like um character driven writing so what happens right. with what happens with character driven writing where it's different from plot driven writing is that instead of having like a set like ending or set plot kind of planned you basically have a character that you come up with you go through everything about this character. So you come up with their backstory. You come up with um, some things that the that the readers might not even ever see. Um, we come up with their backstory, their motivations, their fears, their desires, like all this sort of stuff. You take them, you design them, and you then just tro- like drop them in this situation. And you just let them do what they do. And just watch what they do and then just keep writing what they're doing and how they yeah. get out of that situation. Um, so that's kind of like character driven writing and then plot driven writing is that you know exactly what's going to happen and um, mm-hmm. you just kind of write in that straight line. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you will write it and the plot can be great but people will not care about your plot if there's not good characters to also care about along with it. Um, mm-hmm. Cause like characters are like the big thing that drive any story. So if you are like a plot driven writer, you really have to pay extra close attention to your characters um, because if they're boring, like no one's gonna want to yeah. see your plot through. Right. If you can't like relate to them in, in some sense, then they're not gonna, I, I understand that. So yeah, it just like it depends on what you're kind of working on though. Um and like what I'm working on is like how my creative process works. Um but like I said, like I sometimes will listen to music and then that will inspire me to be like, Oh, I'm gonna um like do something that fits like what I'm feeling from this song or something like that. Um but then like like I said, a lot of the times it's pulling pulling old stuff and um Mm-hmm. bringing it making it new and expanding it when you were mentioning earlier of like writing from things that like already exist i guess do you 
Do you ever go back and I I cuz I I can imagine I'm just trying to picture myself doing this because I would definitely do this. Do you ever go back and and see a release that you did and you're like, "Ah, oh, man, I should have done this." Or or something like you're like, "Oh, I meant to do this, but it it slipped my mind. I didn't." Like, do you ever does that ever happen? Do you ever have that like battle with yourself like, "Man, like you can't do anything about it. It's already out and people are playing it." But do you ever go back and you're like, "I should have changed that oh for sure uh, there's always gonna be times where like especially when the feedback starts rolling in um mm-hmm. like when i because i i love getting feedback um because at the end of the day i'm writing i'm writing these releases for you guys i'm writing them for the players like i want yeah i'm not i'm not gonna write a release like knowing like oh wow players are gonna hate this like i always um, <laughs> right i always want to write a release that players are gonna enjoy so um so whenever there's something that i think think that players are going to enjoy i love getting feedback um and seeing what i could have done better or what they liked because then i'm going to incorporate that in my um my future releases or i might scrap ideas mm-hmm. that i was that i was using um like i might try something out and players will be like wow i hated that and i'm like okay cool like i was just trying it out so i will i will not do that or like it could even be sim- simple things like because um when i write a release i don't just do the scripts i do the map design not like not oh, like wow. the, not the art but um yeah but i do the layouts and then i submit that to the artist and the artist will do the layouts of the map um and then i also oh, do the, um i also do the story yeah. like quests as well so um right so like i designed the quest so like whenever you do a quest that's like kill eight guards um Mm -hmm. or defeat eight guards we don't we don't kill as heroes right um no no we we defeat (laughs) we just knock them out we don't don't kill anyone we knock them unconscious yes so um so it'd be like (laughs) defeat eight guards like so those are kind of like the um quests that i have to come up with um gotcha so i do those as well i didn't even think about the map design yeah, so like map I layouts. I didn't, I didn't think of that. Yeah, map layouts are my responsibility. So um, sometimes I'll like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try this out for a map. And players are like, wow, like I did not like this uh, mechanic of the of that map. I'm like, okay, noted. Um, like one of one of the things was when I was doing the uh, the seven circles war. Um, there was mm-hmm. one of the quests. I think it was for gluttony, um, where it's talking about like gluttony wanted you to fight more or like. Or no, it was greed. It was greed. It was um avarice. Um, mm-hmm. he the so avarice's magic was that um you'd get greedy with your hits, so you'd always feel like you could hit one extra time or something. And in that moment that you swung one extra time because you got greedy, that's when he would take you out. Um, oh, wow. So okay, yeah. A lot of that like description is in like the um the quest descriptions because like I write all yeah. the quest descriptions and stuff. And sometimes those don't always uh get through so um but yeah so like that was like his big thing so like one of the quests was like um to get that urge like out of your system like go back and fight these um these guards that you already fought and people are like i did not like wow they're like i did not like the backtracking of that quest where like i had to go back several frames and Mm -hmm. like fight these guards i was like no i get that so then when i wrote the next release um i made sure it was easy to um complete them without having to do a lot of walking around um right and then i did the the hero smash release um interesting the one and so when i was doing that one i knew i wanted you to go back and fight the um the bosses again and so when i did Uh that to make it easier i had the npc have buttons that just teleported you straight to the the boss so you didn't have to run all the way back because i gotcha because the feedback from that was like oh i didn't like the Mm -hmm. backtracking and i was like okay i'll make it easier to backtrack at least like i won't like get rid of it entirely but i'll i'll mitigate what you were um what kind of made the release less enjoyable for you because i i i've had i'll admit it i've had times where i'm like man i don't like how i have to go back and stuff but there's there's always a reason for everything there there's like there's like a there's a method to the madness right. basically like the the getting greedy with your hits so take out all that on these guards you know that, that makes sense like it, it's weird because like at least me like i, I don't i didn't I, I didn't think like that so it i get it now it makes sense yeah. 
Yeah, and like I wish that I could be there to explain it to everybody who plays the release that like like wow I didn't like that because of this and then I was like well the reason you did that was because of this and they'd be like oh okay that makes sense um, yeah like I wish I could be at everybody's ear kind of telling them why they're doing what they're doing but um, yeah but yeah you could narrate it to them like Morgan Freeman <laughs> right I wish I had the voice of Morgan Freeman that's for sure the reason you're doing this <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny uh, yeah it's just it's cool that it, it it sounds like whenever you write, you always have a reason for why something is happening, like the going back and, and doing this. There's always a, it's never just like, I'm doing this just to do it. Cause why not? Like there's, right. there's, there's always a reason to the decision to, to do that. So, uh, and, and why wouldn't there be, it, it makes sense. Like why? I don't know. I don't know why I never, I feel I don't not stupid, but like it's it's that easy. Like, of course, there's a reason. So you know, it it definitely I understand that now. So that 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 helps me at least. Yeah, it's definitely like one of those things that like um, it's always kind of like difficult to get it across to the player, only because like you don't know how quickly somebody's going to be playing the release. So um, yeah, like th- like for instance, there might be just like an item somebody's excited to get, and it's at the end of the release. So they just run through the release like as quickly as they can, and they might not yeah. be reading the quest descriptions or anything like that, or like the NPC text, or they may even skip the cutscenes, and um, yeah, and like and that's fine, um, but um, then they kind of like lose that like reasoning, um. And so, like, some some of the times when there's complaints about, like, quests, like, they might not know why they did something. Um, and, like, the details were there, but, like, when you're trying to go through so quickly, you might miss those details. And, like, and I wish there was a way to make those details more prominent, but... I've done it before where, I'm, where I just, like, go through a release really fast. I haven't done that in a long time because I always try to... Because I, I know a whole team of people put this together, and, like, it, it takes time. It takes work. It takes creativity so i always try to well i don't always try to i always make sure that i always take the time that i need to to read everything and and absorb it all because a lot of people are like oh i didn't like this release and i'm like how did you not like that release <laughs> it, it was so good but then i find out oh i just i just went through real fast just to go boom 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 just to get this item at the end i'm like well that's why right you didn't like it because you didn't you didn't read it you didn't absorb that's like taking a book and just flipping through the pages and just reading the last sentence to find out the end but you right. don't even know any of the whole story. Right. I hope people listening to this will understand now because I do. I, I get it now. So it, I don't know. I just hope, I hope people get that. No. And like, and I don't, I don't take any offense to it because like there's times where like, um, like there are some people that they're strictly art people. Like they really like the art of the game and they might not care so much for the story. And so, um, so like when they get to the end of the release and they don't like the art, and they're like, oh, this isn't a good release. Like, maybe from, like, an art standpoint to them, like, no, that wasn't a good release. And, um, yeah. and like, I don't I don't take any offense to that Um, where if somebody skips my story, because if, if they're not a story person, then, like, I'm not, I don't want to force it down their throat that they have to, um, right. they have to read my story. So, um, so I always have to, like, when I am taking feedback, I always have to keep that in mind, too, that, like they might not be a they not, might not be a story person or if they are a story person like they might be a certain kind of story person like I I don't know um it's always like situational yeah, when it comes to the feedback and like I I never take it any like I never try to take it any like personally if somebody doesn't that, like that's good you, you can't you can't take it personally and beat yourself up about it right and but, I, and like mm-hmm. I'm like, sorry I, go ahead I was gonna say um I'm and it's not like I'm ignoring the feedback though. So like if um like I'll I'll internalize all the feedback that people give me, um, and I try to like I'm not saying that every time that somebody's like oh the next release you should, um add more dragons and like if dragons didn't fit in that story like I'm not gonna just do it because one person on, on mm. Discord or Twitter decided to tell me that I needed more dragons, um. But like, if it makes if it makes sense, and I don't feel like I also don't want to feel like compromised. Like I don't want to yeah. feel like that I'm just caving into requests. But I at the mm-hmm. same time, like if it's if it's an honest request, like for instance, the backtracking, like I get that, like and that's an easy fix. Um, 
so like I I keep that in mind and in my future releases I try not to incorporate stuff that makes the release more tedious than it needs to be you don't want to overcomplicate things if it doesn't need to be right <laughs> so with all this this talk about uh stories I got one more question before we happen to uh twitter questions um it, it sounds correct me if I'm wrong that you're not creating are you creating story releases every single week like that is it like you every single week like doing releases for AQW or, or I'm sure that if you have like a Dragon Fable like a big release in Dragon Fable you can't get right to AQW so they have someone else do the writing but if that is the case where you do do it every week or just from a release that you released in the past do you ever try to like do you ever try to one up yourself like because I, I can imagine it being hard to create something original every single time like that that's originality seems very hard to me to be original every single release that you do whether it's every week or every month or or whatever it just seems that to be hard to do that so do you ever try to be like okay i'm gonna try to make this release better than the last one of course while keeping con continuity and consistency and all that i get that but do you ever try to try to one-up yourself um definitely and i think um like what you're going on with like how frequent um i write so um, my schedule is basically given to me at the beginning of the year um so we have like the whole year planned out and um and then there'll be certain releases so for instance if we're doing um like an update to something um like let's say there's an update to a certain class um okay. there's not much story tied to that um so i like i wouldn't be on that release um mm -hmm. but there's some months where like for instance i think it was this month i think i only had one release this month and that was the um the may the 4th event the yeah the murder moon um right that was that was mine um nice uh that like so for instance that was my only one this month but then like next month in june i have three releases um so three out of oh, the wow. so three out of the four weeks in june are mine and then july i think all every week in july is mine so um as of right now sometimes the schedule changes but so it depends right. um and like when it comes to dragon fable i try to have all my stuff done already so whenever they want to do um the next fear engine release um that script is done so everything for that release is already done um oh that's good well i mean it, that that's good it makes sense to be prepared ahead of time yeah so i try you're not scrambling at the end oh yeah yeah so i try to i try to have a lot of stuff done as early as i can get it um with ag worlds i've been having to try to write more closer to the deadline. i try to get it at least a month in advance is when i try to get right. things um done that way i can edit anything that um that alina or mamet might want or um or even edit it to my my liking, because um, who knows? Like a yeah. month later, I'm like, eh, I don't really like that. I might change it. Yeah, that, it's better to be able to to fix it when you can, rather than do it at the last minute and then it's released, can't do anything about it, and you're like, oh man. So it, it it's better to do it when you have the time. For sure. Um, but as for the always trying to one up myself, um, definitely, I always want I always want my next release to be better than my last. Um, mm -hmm. and I can't do that all the time. Like for instance, when it comes to like, um, some events that are like kind of one-off events, like for instance, the murder moon, um, yeah. like, I don't want to say that I, like, I didn't put any effort into it. I put effort into it, but I wasn't like going all in on that one. It's not like I'm gonna, um, like for this one-off event that is like a parody event. Um, I just had fun yeah. with that one. Um, oh, I, sure. um, I don't know if you played it, but the yeah. um the npc is uh hammer water you um yeah and i was so how that name kind of came to be was um i took mace windu and <laughs> as you can see and i was like all right well a mace is like a blunt weapon i was like all right hammer so then it's hammer <laughs> and then okay, yeah and then it's like windu and i was like well it's wind with a u at the end and i was like what's another element i was like water so it's hammer water um yeah, i can it, it seems like it'd be hard 
for me at least to to be able to come up with like these parody names and like these satirical things it, it, like that that seems like that'd be so hard to do but like it, it sounds fun to be creative like that like the like the the hammer water you you know i don't know i always thought that the the whole pun thing was funny and almost challenging to be able to to do that and, and make something funny because all the all the, the 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 pun names that i see especially in the in the um in the when you first create an account and you 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 play the kind of like the intro there's a lot of names in there that are that are parodies and and jokes and you see them and you get it immediately like you get it yeah and that's always something that i'm always nervous about because um what's funny to me might not be funny to someone else and like i try to always um i feel like humor is one of the things that i always struggle hardest uh writing because um being funny is hard it um so when i wrote like when i wrote that murder moon release like it's death star like murder moon um yeah so like just coming up with stuff like that like i just went all i just went all in on the on the parody with that one um and so like i'm not gonna necessarily try to come up with the best story for that one not that i'm like (laughs) trying to make a bad story but i'm not gonna put all my creative energy um into like something like that but like when i'm writing main story releases or something like um the seven circles like I'm going to, mm. I'm going to put everything in it. And so like seven circles was definitely like, um, like what I was saying with the Nolgith one, I wasn't, um, like after I got the feedback and realized what I could have improved, like seven circles felt like, um, like something I wouldn't have to do to try to redeem myself for that one. Um, mm-hmm. and so that one, I definitely tried to one up. Um, but so I, I, there are sure. times when I'm always trying to one up myself and, um, even one up some of my colleagues too. Like, um, yeah. like now that, um, Mamet's still like my superior, but like I'm getting closer and closer to being her equal. And so now I'm like, yeah. now I'm trying to like kind of one up her. So, yeah. um, fine. not, not <laughs> in like a malicious way, like, um, like as a no. friendly competition way. And, right. um, so it's a lot of fun though, um, just trying to keep on going better and better. Um, but Definitely. that's also something you have to kind of uh, keep under control too, because you don't want your desire just to keep going higher and higher um, to right. ru- to ruin the story. Um, no, because like you, sometimes you might just go over the top then, and it just comes out weird. <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that one. So now I want to hop into something that I've never done is Twitter questions. Well, I mean, I've done them before, but I've never done it interviewing someone, so this is a first. And this is cool. This is a first for a couple things. You're the first current, like, AE person that I've ever interviewed. So that's exciting. Um, And then the Twitter questions. I went out on Twitter and asked people, said, hey, I'm doing this interview. If you have any questions, let's hear it. So I picked out some of the... Yeah, I'm excited. I picked out some of the questions that I could, obviously. Can't can't have them all because some of them are like, oh, can you give us a sneak peek? Or, or, <laughs> I, tr- uh, I tried to sneak a little, um, I tried to le- sneak <laughs> a like, little sneak peek in with talking about uh, like Malgor's right. uh, lecture and all that fun stuff. So you guys will see yeah. that. Um, you guys will see yeah. that soon. So I tried to, I tried to, I knew I couldn't exactly answer that question, but I tried to put some sneak peeks in there for you. So all those people that ask those questions that are listening, Yes, saw your question. Don't think I'm ignoring you. Just can can't answer everything. <laughs> um, which I hope they understand that. So, uh, the first Twitter question comes from now. The, also, the people listening, if I mispronounce your name or butcher it in any way, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm gonna try my best. Uh, so the first Twitter question comes from Narayan, and Narayan asks, "Do you have more fun creating stories for Dragon Fable or AKW?" I think both of them have their advantages of, um, like, the level of fun that I have working on them. Um, AQ Worlds is so much fun because it's, like, I can do all the punniness and, like, um, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. And, like, not that Dragon Fable has to be serious all the time either. Um, But, like, Book 3 has taken a more serious tone. Um, Mm -hmm. And we've been, like, um, 
we've been taking like more serious topics and um working with them and like there, there's still humor throughout it but um but there's not just like it's not like yeah. riddled with puns like you normally see um and so like at uw i get to do that like the fun like puns and all that fun stuff and um and i also like working on it because like i said i a lot of the times i'm just like scheduled to work on something um yeah so like if i if i could just write whatever i wanted um it'd be a while before i started like writing legion releases because i just wanted to um Mm -hmm. but like when duty calls like duty calls so um yeah so when i write a legion release i still have fun with it and i still enjoy it um and it just keeps my writing diverse because if i was just writing what i'd want i feel like stuff would just start sounding the same and yeah. um so because i get to write so many different things from aqw i really enjoy working with it and um and i get to write so much more frequently with aqw and um and that's always really fun because with dragon fable we have so many stories going on all at once that um mm-hmm. that i might get um one or two maybe three releases a year um towards yeah. finishing my story and sometimes i will like have to go back and play my releases a couple more times and reread through all my notes and stuff to make sure I was, I'm doing what I was planning on doing in that downtime. Um, yeah. And so with AQW, that frequency really helps as well. Um, but with Dragon Fable, it is very much like I get to write what I want. Like, yes, it's going to be That's within, good. it's going to be within um, A's guidelines, like, ratings and all that and not that i would want to write anything like rated m for mature um right but like just making sure that it's within those lines but also like within um verley and dove standards um but for the most part they give me free reign on what i want to do and um and so i really enjoy working within the world of dragon fable um and like doing stuff like that so i think i think both of them have their pluses um I, I don't think I could even say, like, I like working on one more than the other. Do you, like, when, say you're writing a release for Dragon Fable and then you have to do one for AQW, I, because, because, like, AQW's the puns and stuff and, you know, Dragon Fable has that, but it's, it sounds more serious. Do you, you, you have to, like, switch your brain, right? Like, you have your Dragon Fable brain and then you have your AQW brain. And then I can, I mean, that's what it sounds like. And it, do you ever, do you ever, like find yourself if you recently did a Dragon Fable release and now you're writing an Adventure Quest Worlds one. Do you ever find yourself like almost writing a release for AQW like you would for Dragon Fable or vice versa? And then you're like, oh wait, wait, I'm writing a release for this. I need to, I, I need to kind of change that a little bit. Sometimes, um, I know like I was writing. I think it was uh, when I wrote. I was writing something for Dragon Fable and then I wrote the Celestial Past one, and. That, mm-hmm. just, that just had very dark, like, Azalith. Like, Azalith is not, uh, not a very pun character. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't make puns. She doesn't crack, yeah. she doesn't crack jokes. Um, and she's just a very serious villain. Um, and I feel like that was a lot of overlap with Dragon Fable. Um, that I kind of, like, brought that serious character over with me. And, um, and, like... I do I do like writing seriousness. Um like I feel I love AQW's puns and everything. Um but like I said, I always find yeah. it hard to write um like that sort of humor sometimes. Um which seems uh seems hard to believe when I come up with a character named Dirt Licker, but um <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Um But sometimes like it's a struggle for me. So I kinda like doing the serious writing too. Um and a lot and a lot of the times I'll write serious first. And then I'll try to like sneak in puns, um, yeah, like afterward. So um, sometimes that switch does kind of affect the writing, but I wouldn't always say that's um, negative. Like you might just get a release that's a little more serious than, uh, than what yeah. AQW might be used to. But um, it's never gonna be anything like super serious, like, um, like yeah, anything crazy, but. It might just have like less jokes, or maybe the villain doesn't crack any jokes, and um, and I think it's okay to have villains like that um every now and then, right? Um, of course, especially if you're supposed to be afraid of that villain, um, 
Yeah. Because like you, you're trying to create an atmosphere around that villain, and sometimes like if you have a serious villain and they crack a joke, like it shatters that that fear of them. Um, right. And so it depends on w- when you use it and how you use it. I always try to make sure the hero cracks jokes. Um, oh, definitely. Because like that's their personality, and like, um, the hero is one of the hardest characters for me to write, honestly. Uh, really? Yeah, because. Um, like, I always have a story to tell, but sometimes it might just involve, like, the villain and then the side character helping you. And then I have to mm-hmm. remember, like, this isn't this isn't this person's story, it's the hero's story. And, yeah. um, and, like, ultimately it's up to the player. So I have to, like, kind of work how the hero fits into the story I might have done. And I'm, sometimes I might have to scrap a whole story because I'm like, this isn't even about the hero anymore. Um, oh, yeah, wow. And so, um, that was like when I was transferring to, uh, AQW and that Nolgith release happened where people were saying that the hero was a jerk. Um, Mm -hmm. that was, that was like a difficult thing for me because, um, when I write with Dragon Fable, like your, like the Dragon Fable hero is all about just doing like the right thing if that makes sense like they're they're mm-hmm. pure yeah. they're pure good like there's no choice between being good or evil like you can have your head canon of them being evil and like we don't try to sway like a certain way but a lot of the threats in it are ones that like the choice is obvious um right. and, like what the right thing to do is and um regardless of like your your faction um but like when writing the Nolgith one I hadn't I hadn't wrote the AQW hero in so long that um I for, like not that I forgot that you can choose like between good or evil but like I didn't consider it I didn't weigh it as heavily as I should have where like cuz like in the Nolgith release you basically are fighting against Nolgith and but if yeah. you're if you're a part of the Nolgith nation that release makes no sense to you as to why you're doing it right um gotcha And that wasn't, like, something that I kept in mind when I wrote it. So sometimes, like, just knowing that, like, a player may um, align their character a certain way, um, I have to keep that in mind with every release that I do. And, um, and, like, I don't want to shatter somebody's headcanon of their character because um, every person deserves to have their character be the way they want them to be. So... Oh, definitely. Um... So I have to be careful with that, and um, so that why that way, um, or that's the reason why, um, the hero is probably one of the hardest characters for me to write because I want to try my hardest to make sure that um, I keep everybody's um head cannons in mind and try to make it so yeah. that I don't mess with that. I never thought of that. That's a that's something you definitely have to keep in mind now that you talk about it. Another Twitter question comes from Esh. I believe that's how you pronounce it, Esh. Uh, Esh has two questions. Uh, the first being, how do you deal with creative block? That And uh, it's someone also commented that definitely answer this one. Because a lot of people suffer from that, no matter what you're doing, and it's hard to overcome. Uh, so w- maybe what are your, your uh, tips on how you uh, deal with creative block? The biggest way that, or the easiest way that I um, handle creative block is just start absorbing as much entertainment as you can. Um, whether that be play play new video games, play um, read new books, um, watch new TV shows, um, listen to new music. Um, just introduce yourself to some new sort of entertainment, and um, that might just make you start thinking in a completely different way on um how to overcome like something that you're struggling with um Mm -hmm. like um i've been making a point to start playing a lot of new indie games because i normally play like the bit the mainstream games and there's a lot of old indie games that i never got the chance to go back to and play um so now that i have a little extra free time i've been hopping on and doing that so i played um i played undertale for the first time like last oh really how was that um i really enjoyed it um i thought it was really cool um and i'm in the middle of hollow knight right now um nice and i really enjoy hollow knight and um just immersing myself in those universes has like 
made me think like, oh, I could do something like this, or I could uh, make a character that acts like this, or um, like I could hide something like this. So like, for instance, yeah. um, for instance, in Dragon Fable, I just had a release not too long ago. Um, I have this, these series of releases, um, l- they don't have like an official name, but I've been calling them the hide behind saga. So, um, mm-hmm. the, it's about these monsters that, um, basically sneak up and attack things. And oh, wow. so the release is you like walking around and then you might be walking and you'll see an enemy ahead of you and you'll start walking towards them. And this monster comes up and snatches them and rips them off of your path. And then you don't have to fight that monster anymore, but you just watched like the boss of the area come in and attack <sighs> like the other monsters. Wow. And, um, well, that, that's cool. Yeah. The, um, that's all like Verly is doing. Verly and Dove have been able to like animate and code that. And it's so cool. Mm-hmm. But so like those releases um in the most latest one i like hit a whole secret side mission in it um Mm -hmm. and there's like basically a hidden computer in it and um it was all kind of like inspiration from undertale and um yeah because there's like a secret lab and there's like a secret character named um wd gaster and Mm -hmm. um that was sort of my inspiration for doing something out of the box like that um nice and so like if you ever have like it might not even be creative block it could be something just like for you to come up with something completely new or something just fun or out of the box um that you wouldn't have normally done if you hadn't had consumed that entertainment yeah that's a that's a that's a good point it's a good tip yeah so that that would be my um my number one recommendation if you're dealing with creative block um, and then the other thing that I do is I look back at old, um, old stuff related to it. So for instance, mm-hmm. um, like for instance, when I was talking about the seven circles one again, um, I didn't know what to do with it. And like, I was at a creative block. And so I just looked back at old Legion stuff and I was like, Ooh, this detail, like, I remember this, like, I'm going to work with this now. Um, and that solved mm-hmm. my creative block right there. Um, so like looking at old stuff or like even looking at old stuff that you like maybe an old idea that you thought of, you're like, Oh, like it'd be a cool story if I had a guy riding an invisible b- bicycle. Um, yeah. And, or something like that. And like, you thought of that just randomly, um, while you were eating lunch one day. And then a couple months later, you're like, man, I don't know what to write for a short story. And you're like, Oh, I had this idea a while back. So like, just go back to old yeah. ideas that you had. Um, and like write write down old or like write down ideas when you have them so that you can go back to them. Um, yes, I feel like that's always really important um, to keep that, track that of is that stuff. Very, yeah, that is very important. Like when I when I did the interview with Tana or I did this or I'm, I wrote the questions for this interview, I, I I tend to always come up with ideas or questions in this case at the weirdest times. Yeah, but I always. It, always the weirdest times but i always try to make a point to write them down i i tend to come up with a lot of questions as i'm like falling asleep and i'm like oh and then if i don't write it down i'll wake up in the morning or i'll or, or i'll have too much confidence where i'm like oh i'll remember that question when i wake up I, I you know i got this like i'll remember that but then i don't and i'm like oh no such a good question <laughs> right and then um yeah i a lot of my like thinking and brainstorming happens when i'm at work um mm-hmm where I'll be like do, walking around doing my doing my job and I'll mm-hmm. be thinking like about a release that I'm working on and um I'll keep a notebook on me and I'll probably um and I'll write down ideas that um I have while I'm working when I probably should be doing my job um but um yeah just always keep something with you where you can write down whether it be your phone and just like open up the notes on your phone and just type it out real quick um yeah or keep a notebook on you and take the notes but like definitely try to get it as soon as that idea came because you might be like oh i can wait until i like have time to write this down and you might forget maybe just parts of it even that um that could have helped you with your creative block later and the parts you forget always seem to be the really important ones and you're like yeah man they might not even seem Mm -hmm. important it could be something along the lines of like you're like, oh, I'm going to do this, and then he's going to be wearing roller skates, and then he's going to be doing this, and blah, 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 <laughs> blah. And then, like, you forget yeah. the roller skates part, 
and then you're at a mental block and that mental block could have been solved by your character wearing roller skates um that's true so that was well said that's true. as something as as silly as roller skates even if the idea is so stupid if you're like man this is a really dumb idea write it down because something from a really stupid idea you could either create something from that that's really awesome or you could take that stupid idea and and write more for it or create more for it and that stupid idea ends up being not stupid and really cool so it, whatever you whatever idea it is just write it down there's no harm in writing it down the worst that you can do is be like no nah, i don't want that erase it you're done right but for sure. if, you know write it down it's like it's almost like asking someone to do something the worst they can say is no so just just do it just why not what, what do you have to lose just write it down we have another question from Esh. Uh, it's she or Esh asks, how long is the process of creating an average storyline? It just depends on the importance of the release and um, like how big it is. Um, I would say like a like a small one, probably like an afternoon, uh, maybe a day, um, and mm -hmm. then like kind of like the bigger ones. I would say it probably takes like a solid week to get it all prepped. Um, yeah. And like and like I said, I try to do these a, um, a month in advance. That way. If, something takes me a little longer than a week. Um, I can still get it to them on time to, because like my stuff is the first step due because um, mm -hmm. I pick what monsters are going to be in the release. I like have to pick what the boss looks like um, and stuff like that. And then I give that to the artists mm -hmm. and then the artists have to create it. Then once the artist create it, then it has to go and get animated. And then we have to put, um, like values on it like it's health or it's damage or anything like yeah. that um and then like reens has to put the whole release together um yeah so like my stuff is the stuff that needs to be done first so i try to get it in as early as possible um yeah so but yeah i would say about a week for a big release but like a day for something small yeah that must be a lot of pressure knowing that like I, I gotta get this in so like every it's like it's like a, a whole network of like cog wheels like everything has to work together for it to to work properly is it is it i bet it i bet it's really cool to like think of a boss or uh monsters that populate your the map your area and then giving it to the artists and like seeing your thing like come to life oh I for bet that's sure cool. for sure um when i was doing um the ice plane release um so abel um he um i don't know if you remember abel he was just in um right. he was in in december there was that dungeon with him um okay yeah, yeah yeah um he was my first character in aqw um actually my first character nice. with Arctic entertainment um so nice. he he always uh holds a special place in my heart um because he was like my first character so um yeah. doing that ice plane release though with him um, you see the Enfield, which is the Ice Titan, um, mm -hmm. which that was an old remnant from that old outline that I gave Alina when I first started, uh, when I first started working with AE. Yeah. Um, that that was just something I was able to carry over from that because it, um, because like I mean you know they reworked everything. Um, yeah. They stopped following like the Elemental Titan. Um, outline sort of thing so um a mm -hmm. lot of those releases got scrapped which wasn't like a huge deal but um i still like had that story and i kind of wanted to tell it as much as i could so um so i brought like the enfield in in that release and just like putting in like telling mamet like what i wanted with it and she designed it and um just seeing it get designed and everything was awesome and um the pet form of it is still my pet on my character to this day um nice since that release because it was just so cool coming up with that that creature and then um seeing it get made um right there's times where like i wish like like if i could pick any skill to take um to add to ae is i would love to learn how to animate um oh yeah i bet that would be awesome um it, it looks like so much work like between um ghost and dove are like the two animators that i know um mm -hmm. and just seeing like the stuff that they have to do i'm like there's no way i would have the patience for um getting all of that <laughs> yeah. right um but i wish i could do it because like 
Um, this is with anything, and it's, it's no one's fault, and it's not it's a bad thing, but, like, things are always going to come out differently than how they are in your head. Um, That's um, true. Like, unless you do it yourself. And mm-hmm. um, so, like, I wish I could animate my own cutscenes and, like, have it come out perfectly, like, how I want it to. Um, but... Like, but the work that both of those um, animators do is amazing. Um, seeing some of the stuff that Dove does, because, like, um, Dragon Fable is, like, a higher... Uh, I don't want to say higher quality. It's a higher... Um, mm-hmm. Like, the artwork is more defined, and, like, it's bigger. Um, so, like, I right. feel like it's... I feel like it's more difficult to animate, but some of the stuff that he can do because of that, and like the stuff that he does and like the stuff that he's able to pump out is incredible. Um, there's yeah. the, there's a place in Dragon Fable called the the Inn of Time, um, mm-hmm. or the the Inn at the Edge of Time, and it's all boss like challenge bosses, and nice. um, Dove does a lot of the artwork for those, and then he animates them. Um, and it's amazing to see what he is able to do. He, um, they've been doing Chaos Lords in there. Um, cause like the mm-hmm. Chaos Lords don't show up in Dragon Fable, like in story wise, but, um, we've been doing them as challenge bosses and the mm-hmm. artwork that he's been doing, like seeing them translate to Dragon Fable has been amazing. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, but yeah, I wish I could, I wish I could do what, uh, what Dove does. And what Ghost does. Yeah, that, that that seems like a very... <laughs> you got a lot of patience. Yeah, Especially if you want to sure. learn how to do it. Yeah. And then even once you're really good at it, you got to have patience. There's always parts of whatever you're doing, if you're really good at it, that you just, you dread. Right. Like the most. You're like, yep. oh man, now I'm at this part. Oh. Yep. I have a, another Twitter question. We have a few more to go. Right. Uh, this one is from Fayu Hero. Uh, Fayu Hero asks... What your all-time favorite AE story slash release is and why. And it doesn't have to be one that you worked on yourself. It can be from any AE game. I I loved the Elemental Titan releases. Um, mm-hmm. I thought they were so fun. And I thought the Titan designs were so cool. I think they're still... To this day, I still think that the Elemental Titans are some of the coolest um, monsters we have in the game. Um, between yeah, right. the, the Phaedra... I, th- I hope that's how it's pronounced, and the um the guy the Gaiazor. Yeah. Um, they're some of the coolest looking creatures in our game, and I loved the stories tied to them. Um, and then I've always been a fan of the Blade of Awe. I have no idea why. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, the Blade of Awe, the Blade of Awe has always been my favorite weapon. Um, yeah. And so I love the releases tied to the Blade of Awe. Um. And in in Adventure Quest Classic, they go more into the lore of the Blade of Awe, and it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like the AQW stuff too. Um, yeah. And th- there's a little bit in Dragon Fable, but nothing crazy. Um, I mean, there's a whole saga. It's the Earth the Earth Orb saga about it um, that it's involved in. Right. But um, yeah, the Blade of Awe has always been one of my favorite like things in a a. Yeah. Um, Definitely. But I, I will uh, not necessarily that he an- that he asked this question, but I'll answer it. Um, my favorite release that I've done um, mm-hmm. is the Thorn finale um, in Dragon Fable. Um, just seeing like something like like I said, like a lot of the times I have like the ending um, in my brain, and mm-hmm. watching something that was like ten releases long, and watching it finally reach that ending. Um, and like just seeing it for myself, like seeing it on screen and like seeing people's reactions to it was amazing. Um, it was one of the best, the best feelings that I've had with the company. Um, that's good. You should be proud of that. Hold on to that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I love that release. Um, Dove did a lot of the artwork and the um, animation for that. Well, almost all of the animation, or it, almost if not all the animation for it. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was just awesome. Like he did such a good job. Um, and yeah, it was just like having your story finally end like to where you want it to be is there's like a, like not necessarily like a relief in that, but something, Mm -hmm. yeah, just something awesome about it. 
that must feel really cool. You've had this whole thing in your head and it took so, uh, you know, so many releases and then you're seeing it in front of you play out and it comes to an end and you're like, end scene. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I can imagine that feels really cool. Yeah, it was, it was so cool. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorite favorite releases um i'm sure if i hear asked another question and i'm sure we touched on this multiple times with questions that i had um and if i hear asked walk us through your creative process of story writing i believe we answered that yeah yeah that was did. um yeah that was all about the, yeah uh, um like picking pieces to work with like a starting piece and then Yes. Going from there. Yeah. And then things that like already exist and yep. stuff like that. Yep. And then like also like the new media and stuff like that. So we have a question from UFO. I believe that's how you pronounce it. UFO. Yeah. UFO asks, what's the hardest part of your job? I touched on this a little bit, but like, like I said, writing the hero, um, writing the hero yeah. is always kind of hard. Um, and quest and quest design, surprisingly. Um, mm-hmm. the thing about quest design is that like, I always try to come up with fun quests because like a lot of the times I feel like I'm just writing quests like, Oh, go defeat this guy or Oh, go defeat that guy. Um, and like when you're playing that release after release after release and like all of those quests are like that. Um, yeah, I don't want it to get boring. So I keep on, I keep on trying to come up with interesting quests so, for instance, with that Nolgith release, I really tried to go all in on the quest design, and mm-hmm. um, and that's why like there's one of the quests is you are f- defending like the fiend shard, and like it's basically like enemies just keep respawning and fighting, and you have to kill like thirty of them, I think, and right. um, and they just keep respawning. So like it feel like I wanted it to feel like a cutscene that you got to play. Where like yeah, yeah, where like the fiend shards behind you, and it like and all these enemies are coming at you trying to get to it, and it's your job to like fend them off. Um, mm-hmm. So like I wanted to create a quest like that, and like an encounter like that, and then like in the follow up uh, release, uh, the second part, you're you're tasked with destroying the fiend shard, and so it's like this boss that has a bunch of health, and while you're fighting it, um, like chipping away at its health. Um, mm-hmm. like more enemies are spawning trying to stop you. Um, right. And so, like, I wanted to create fun encounters like that. And so, I don't know, like, I don't know if that ended up coming out that way. Um, but like, I, like mm. I said, I wanted it to feel like a cutscene that you got to play. Um, and so I'm always trying to challenge myself in coming up with cool new quests that um yeah. might not be like the typical like oh just beat these enemies or oh collect like do these clickies where you click on the things to pick no, them up no, like the foot yeah yeah um so i always try to con- try to find like new ways without without changing the gameplay too much um okay so like trying to come up with fun stuff like that so i, I don't know if people ended up actually enjoying those encounters i didn't really see much feedback on those mm-hmm. in particular but um but yeah, just coming up with like quest design like that is um always a challenge. Um, yeah, yeah and I then, can imagine that would be a challenge. Yeah, and then like um, and writing like making characters unique, um, is always hard as well. Like making characters that people mm-hmm. care about, um, mm-hmm. because like and I talked about this when I was talking about my process, how I'm like a plot driven writer. Um, and how I said that you have to put so much focus on your characters if you're going to do that. Um, yeah. so like, I always try to make exciting characters and sometimes they don't come out that way. Um, right. Like you, like there might just be some character where people are like, wow, I can't, I can't come up with anything fun about this character. Um, like, like nothing to hold on to. And, Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've, I've been working on that. Um, I hope that That's you guys good. see that in this um, in these next main story releases because I've been trying to add a lot of character to the people that show up in those. I, I like the idea of of playing through a cutscene, almost like playing through like a movie, and I, I think that that's really really fun and interesting. And I, I imagine like like you were saying about writing characters that I I feel that if you're 
writing a character or multiple characters, you like if you make a character say something and then like another character says something totally different, like their personality and you're like, well, no, like this character would never say this kind of thing or, you know, stuff like that, I, I feel would be would be a challenge trying to keep the characters unique to themselves in their own way without them trying to like sound the same. Right. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's definitely a challenge. UFO also asks, do you play your own stories? Um, I do. Um, unfortunately, I don't really get to hop on to AQW as much as I would like. Um, mm-hmm. Normally, when I play my own release, how it goes is um, when the release, we have like a testing server. Um, I'll hop on the testing server and test it out. And, um, yeah. And, like, I'll play through it then. And sometimes the cutscenes won't even be added into it yet. And, um, I'll have to come back. Right. But I'll I'll play through it and see how it is and, like, how it plays. And then um, a lot of times at that point, it's, like, really hard to change things. But if I see something, like, really bad, I'll, like, beg Greens to not, um, to not smite me and... <laughs> um, yeah. and like ask her to change something and sometimes she's like no like there's nothing we can do at this point and i'm like dang but um but <laughs> most of the time she's she's good about or not necessarily good about it but she uh she tries her hardest to make mm-hmm. it work well that's good that you get to 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 some extent and if you if you get like the full opportunity to play your stories i bet that that's really cool that must be a really weird feeling i, yeah. I would think like i'm i made this <laughs> now i'm playing it <laughs> I, I wrote this story and then like seeing it like if it's playable or not because i feel like that i feel like that that's hard like you can write a story that would be good for reading but then like does it translate to a playable game i feel like that would be hard because like you have stories in games say and then someone wants to make a movie out of it but it doesn't translate right to film yeah. So I can imagine like writing a story and trying to make it so it's playable and you still get the same effect that you originally intended when you wrote it. Yeah, that's always that's always fun. But yeah, I really want to try to make um to make a point of uh playing a release when it comes out like with the community. I've tried I've tried it every now and then. Um I try to like hop on and like go to the map and play when people are playing. Um Yeah. I get unique feedback that way too because I get people like that's in what the I moment. was. Yes, I was just about to say you probably get a, a lot of feedback that way. Yeah, I don't. I I don't get to do that as much as I would like. Um, I'm usually working when my releases go live. Um, yeah. But I try to I try to um, log on and see how people are liking it. I'm gonna try. I might try try extra hard lately to log on and play while the release is live. Yeah, it's good to be able to sit back, take a moment, and just absorb it. We have one more Twitter question from I'm Marie. I'm Marie asks, how many years have you practiced your writing skills? Like I said, I've written since I was a kid. Um, it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't very good. Um, I like it wasn't really until college that I like practice practice like with with the intent like the practice with the intent of making it better um like like as you grow older i feel like when you just start writing and like you take all your like high school classes and all that stuff like eventually your writing will get better than what you were when you were a kid um and and like the more you read and stuff um but it wasn't really until high school or college that i really tried to um and like when i was with ae that i tried to improve my writing um like through practice um yeah so i'd have to say for like a couple of, like let's see it was like six years i have to say how many years okay. i was practicing um but like i was always trying to like come up with new things like whenever they would do those release contests um yeah where, like you could like submit a release i always submitted one funny thing is that none of mine ever got picked um none of them <laughs> but nope. hey look here you are now <laughs> right um but i like i look back at the ones i submitted and i was like oh yeah that that would not work in our current um like it wouldn't it just wouldn't work like it like either mm-hmm. something i did with it didn't work or practice and uh, the, the saying's true that practice 
you know, makes perfect. Yep. You gotta, if you want to be good, you have to practice. You gotta devote time to it, and you will have no problem doing that if you enjoy what you're what you're doing. Yeah, and if anybody's looking to improve their writing, the best thing that I can say is um, read read a lot of books, um, or just just take in any sort of entertainment that you can, whether it be watching mm-hmm. TV shows, watching movies, reading books. Um, books are the most helpful because it's just pure writing. Um, yeah. Because like mov- movies are a combination of um, like the di- like the director the mm-hmm. the music the the art like not necessarily like art artwork but like it's a mixture of a lot right. of things um same thing with like video games like you might like a video game for the artwork but not the writing so like books are the best thing that are just pure writing um yeah so like those help the most but like anything helps um because you know what's entertaining um and then there's a couple books that are about writing itself um and like different That's interesting different authors um like processes um one that i've read twice now is um stephen king's on writing it's just it's called on writing um i didn't know that stephen king released a a book on writing yep so um it's really good it's really helpful the first half is just his biography um mm-hmm. or like biogra- biogra- uh, biographical stuff but yeah. um the back half of that book is just like what to do as a writer um to make your yeah. stories stick with people and how to like do it like a writing masterclass yeah and um just reading that book helped me become a better writer because like um one of the things that he like says is um don't use adverbs like mm-hmm. adverbs are like um quickly or um or like nervously like anything with like lee at the end he's like don't use those because um it just makes your writing sound bad um huh um he's like and like when people are talking where you'd be like oh this person said this and like this person said that sometimes you'd be like oh this person yelled or this person um like breathed like they said something breathily yeah um and he's like, just he's like, just say said. He goes, nobody, nobody's hanging, <laughs> like nobody's reading the dialogue, and then at the end, seeing how somebody uh, tried to say it. I was like, he's like, you don't have to give descriptions on how people said things. Like, if your dialogue is good enough, they'll get the idea. Um, yeah. And like, and just adverbs. Um, go back to the adverbs things. He was like, yeah, these are just not. They just don't help. They just make you look like you're writing a thing for a high school paper. Um, <laughs> Right. And so he's like, yeah, he goes, you don't really need those. And you'd be surprised at how much better your writing is just by removing those. That's a good tip. Yeah. So, I mean, not that I handled those um, so much in AQW because, like, we have dialogue bubbles. So, like, nobody's saying, like, he said this, he said that. Um, yeah. And, not, and I don't, like, have to describe movement because it's animated. But, like, if you're writing just a book or anything like that, it helps. Yeah. That's really good tips. Hopefully any writers out there or aspiring writers that are listening to this can uh, can learn from that. Maybe even check out that book. I'm not even a writer. I might even read it. It's hard for me to 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 find books that I like to read. Like I really enjoy reading. Reading is awesome and I love it. But it's, so, it's just like I got to find the right one. Yep. It is, it is definitely a challenge. Draws me in. Like I, I know people like my sister. She can just pick up any book and read it. I can't do that. <laughs> I need to find the, like, oh, yes, this. And like, if I'm drawn in right, right away by reading it, I'll usually sit down and just read the whole thing. Yeah, that's normally but, how I do it, too. Yeah, my fiance yeah. has been on a reading kick. She just started working at a bookstore and she's been nice. And she's been just buying books on top of books and just reading them. I'm like, how are you doing this? I was like, I'm the writer here. I mean, she has she has I a degree understand. in English. She has a degree in yeah. literature. So gotcha. Um, but yeah, no, she she reads way more than I do. I don't know. Reading's reading's a good thing. We need it is. more people to read. I don't know. You can learn so much from reading. Oh, Just, for sure. It broadens your thinking, your speaking, your vocabulary. Yeah, it just reading's a good thing. All right. We did it. We did 
we we did the thing. We it did happened. The, thing. the interview has happened. It is, yep, yes, I was so book. excited for this interview. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm, I'm learned, excited to see I, what people uh, have to say about it. I know. I learned a lot. This is a really cool. Like I, I I knew what I thought I would learn, and I did learn those things. But I learned more, and I don't know. I I I think that I just like having a a, a set uh, amount of questions that I, I come up with because then when you get into it, you, you learn more, you get more than what you ask for, but then more questions arise. Right. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, it, it was a good, it was a good interview. Yeah, no, I felt good about it. Um, it was nice. That's that good. it was just like a conversation. It was good. Yes. That's, that's what I, that's what I hope. I don't want my interviews, anyone listening or anyone a part of the interview just to feel like I'm grilling them. I, I just want it to be like a, just a conversation that you would have with someone at a bar or drinking coffee or just you're just sitting there talking. That's all it is. Yeah, I'm going to like listen to this and I'm going to be like, wow, I like because I just listened to this is the fifth episode, right? Yeah, this is number five. Yeah. So I listened to four episodes so far of other people well, talking. And uh, thank you. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, thank I've been, I've been checking out it. every episode. So, um, hey. That's cool. I'm, I hope I'm doing all right, and I appreciate you lending me your your time to to listen to those episodes, and then also lending me your your time to sit here and 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 pick your brain. Oh yeah, definitely. And, uh, um, I like talk. like I said, I always love um talking to the community. I think that we have a unique nice. um we have a unique company here where we're able to do that. Um, like on a, on an individual basis too. Like, yeah, not a lot of companies can do that. Yeah, like the writers for some video games, like they don't like they have like their Twitters and stuff and they can interact mm-hmm. with communities if they really try. But like we can just send out a tweet and it gets retweeted and then we get all this feedback in. Yeah, I, I love the fact that we can interview or well, yeah, interview in general. I was lucky. Or, yeah. Not that I was lucky to be able to interview. They um. Yeah, I'm I'm happy this all worked out and I and I hope I can have you back on yeah, at, yeah definitely we can, we can do a follow-up one um definitely a this follow-up was a lot one. Of fun. or just or if i'm just recording an episode and i'm like you know what i want to hear hear your your <laughs> thoughts on this and just drag in and, and talk to you for a little bit i don't know i just yeah. want to make this like a like a thing where people that i've interviewed or pe- you know i want to have them i want everyone to be able to be a part of this yeah no it's, it's awesome to it in and, some way yeah, and when I like when I saw this because I think I saw it from um, Alina retweeting it. Um, yeah, that's how most people found out about it. Yeah, I saw it and I was like, oh, I was like, um, because I actually this is I'll be honest, this is the first podcast I listened to. Um, I've always wanted, hey, cool. I've always, yeah, I've always wanted to get into podcasts and um, nice. I, and so I was like, I was like, you know what? I was like, this seems really cool. So I checked it out and I really enjoyed it. So, um. Oh. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, so keep it up. Um, I'm really enjoying all Thank the episodes. You. Um, good. I'm, I'm, you know, in each episode, I, I try to make it better. I mean, you know, over time, it'll, it'll get, get better. Not that it's like terrible, but it, you right. know, everything. There's always going to be better. Everything yeah, can always get better. Of course. I, I'm surprised people are, are, sitting through the whole thing, because <laughs> like I, because I always like, I don't care how long the episode is, like however long it is that's how long it it takes for everything that needs to be said to be said right so i i I appreciate that people really listen to the whole things and because i'm always worried about that sometimes but i'm like you know what it's it's fine it's as long as it is and and people are gonna listen to like this episode this episode is gonna be a long one this is a we've been recording for two hours and 46 minutes but then once i you know edit it a little bit take out silences and and mistakes and stuff it'll probably end up being like two hours 25 30 minutes i'm excited yeah i'm excited excited too um edit all of it yeah i'm excited to see what people have to say and um because like i said i'm always looking for feedback because at the end of the day i write the releases for you guys um yeah and so i love seeing what people have to say about my releases and what they Mm -hmm. think and what i could be doing better or what i could um keep doing um, if there's yeah. something that they liked. So I love being able to interact with the community and I try to do it as much as possible. Um, like whenever there's like a fan discord or something, I always hop in and, uh, nice and try to talk to people. Like I'm in two dragon fable fan discords. Um, nice. And then 
I haven't seen any AQW discords. I haven't really looked, but, um, mm-hmm. but I need to. Yeah, there's a few. Some of the some of the uh, the bigger uh, YouTubers or content creators, or what what have you. They ha- they have theirs. Uh, there's this one and and stuff like that. And there's there's a there's the Arctic's one and all that. But right, yeah, I'm in I, the Arctic's one. I try to I try to hop in there every now and then. Mm-hmm. It's good that you go out of your way to try to 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 seek out people and and just conversate with them. I think that's good. Right. I know. I I'm like I wish I was um I wish I was Alina's level of uh popular on Twitter where I could just like send yeah. out a tweet and then get like eighteen hundred tweets. But at the same time, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that would be like 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 you said earlier. She has patience. Yes. Patience. Yes. For people. That, that that's hard to come across. It's hard to have. I don't, and I don't think you can be taught that. I think that's something that you just have. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you can't just like learn patient patience. You just have it. So there's no there's no college class on patience, right? There should <laughs> you be. You can't just go to school for patience. Since this is this is we're wrapping it up now. The floor is yours. If there's anything you want to plug, anything at all, I don't, I don't care what it is. Just the floor is yours. Is there anything you want to plug or tell anyone? Um, I just if you're listening to this and you don't already follow me on Twitter, uh please do because um I'm always trying to send stuff out, um, seeking feedback and stuff. Um and seeing what how you guys like my releases and everything like that and even just the state of the game, anything that we could be doing better. Um I love the feedback, so if you don't already and you're listening to this, uh follow me on Twitter. It at Ananatus A E. Um Oh, underscore AE. Inanitas underscore okay. AE. Um, but yeah, so if you don't already, please do, because I would like to see your feedback. Um, and even just at the end of a release, and you know that I wrote it, um, or even if even if I didn't write it, um, any sort of feedback of a release helps me. So feel free to just tweet me something and be like, hey, like this release was cool, or um, I would have liked it if you did this, or if this was done. Um any of that's helpful so yeah and anyone listening if this is their first time listening uh you know you can go back and check out the other episodes as well i highly encourage it but um you can join the discord the adventure cast discord um you know uh, people are those are that also grew kind of big which i'm surprised about and i've been talking to a lot of people we've built like a pretty cool right now it's just a cool small tightly knit community and you can you can talk to to everyone you know and uh inanitas is is in there j6 there's there's a lot of people in there and it's just cool we all we hang out in game when we can and we talk and we just have a good time playing the game and just talking so if you guys want to join the discord please please join and come hang out with us because we'd be more than happy to to have you there uh if you guys want to follow the adventure cast twitter at ac live podcast and you can also follow my lanky twitter uh at lanky aqw and uh talk to me there and 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 all that and you know comment on these videos i also like feedback feedback is good if i'm doing something that you don't like or something i can improve on let me know because i'm always looking to improve everything that i do especially this because it's a thing now and people like it so i want to try to make it the best that it possibly can be and, and try to bring things to the table that people want brought to the table. So feedback is everything in the discord, Twitter on comments of this video, what, what have you just, just light it up, do it. And Anitas, it has been a pleasure. I appreciate you letting me interview you. Oh yeah. Thanks and for having me. I definitely want, yeah, of course. I definitely want to have you on. And uh, if anyone has suggestions of who else I should interview, if you want to have another Anitas interview, let me know. We'll try to make it happen. Thank you, everyone, for listening. This has been AdventureCast, the fifth episode. Can't believe it. We're already on episode number five. We're doing really well. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. I think that is something to be proud of. Everyone should be proud of that because everyone's uh, kind of helped build it together and, and do it. So we're doing it, and we're going to go for as many episodes as we, as we can. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you guys for listening, and I will see you in the next episode of AdventureCast. Peace.